Welcome to Nerdities. Bitches. No, oh, thought that it's too absurd. No, Sam knows too ass line because we are nerdy tees. They're nerdy jerseys fine as there. Sorry, folks, my tongue's been out of work for a while. It's vacation return time. Me and M have spent money. Gone Florida. Been <laughs> Disney. Hot. They'll all come back to me later. Don't worry. Uh, me, I'm Mike. He is... Justin. The other guy? Ben. Our last dude? Go. Because we don't have a Kyle right now. We might not have a Kyle all night. Because, as ever, life. Uh, if you want to hear about what we've been going on, uh, what we've been doing lately, you're going to have to wait. Because we're going to do the proper show first and then get into personal life slash vacation. We always start with rest in peace, but nothing really touched there. So, uh, casting. Uh, Jack Black and Paul Rudd may be doing a comedy version of Anaconda, and I don't know how to feel about this. I feel great about this. Like, a straight-up remake, or those two together in a movie about a giant snake? I they hope. they back Owen Wilson? I hope. Wow. It's a shot-for-shot shot remake. <laughs> I would like them... Oh, was that Be Kind Rewind? How they did the shot-for-shot shot oh, of all those yeah. movies? Not that kind of shot-for-shot, shot, please. I mean, if they're going to do that, I want Jack Black to play the Ice Cube character... <laughs> And I want Paul Rudd to play John Voight's completely offensive South American character. <laughs> and do the voice, too. Do the really bad Tony Montana voice the whole time. They did say this is going to clearly be a comedy. Yes. Doesn't mean it can't be its own kind of... It'll probably be like a Night at the Museum kind of comedy. If it was an R-rated... Oh, if it's an R-rated comedy about a killer giant snake. We're going to post Deadpool World now. <laughs> yeah. I think they're finally understanding that you can show a little blood and a few fucks and shits. And people will come. If there's a comic book there. All over themselves. Well, I, how much of the demographic of comic book people would you say are in their 30s? And above? Most. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what I mean. Like when they cater to kids, it's like they're they're just catering for merch because the real audience is adults. Like I want to see Rogue's tits pop out of her chest. I'm sorry, I'm a man. Excuse me. I mean, that's a that that's a tree you're barking off that nothing's gonna come down. Yeah. You're not. Gonna... But we still got Power Girl, though, am I right? She is she coming down the pipe? And her onesie with her her boobs coming out. Mm? Well, they'll if, never. They'll, they'll, they'll never make that costume. Out. Never they'll make that. They'll never uh, make we're that costume. Supergirl, but not Power Girl, not oh, not the alternate. Supergirl. Supergirl gonna have that that halo. No. You know who needs to be Power Girl? Christina Hendricks from Mad Men. The woman that's like seventy five percent tits. Sydney Sweeney. Yeah, or <laughs> Sydney Sweeney. Sweeney. Sydney Sweeney's great. But Christina Hendricks' breasts are immaculate. They're like fucking. Yeah, there's a rumor she got offered a role for a certain somebody. Yeah, that was heartbreaking. That uh, Sydney Sweeney could potentially be Black Cat in Spider-Man Four. Nice. It, like the, the picture I saw was like <laughs> Black Cat's bosom just popping mm -hmm. out of her chest, and then they go, "Sydney Sweeney's been cast because," <laughs> and like it was like three images, like Sydney Sweeney, the Black Cat, and then like a zoom in on on Bubs. <laughs> because tits acting too but most she's a great actress I think I don't know yeah, yeah she's in White Lotus right yeah she's good in that 
uh, much to Justin's chagrin, James Spader will be returning as Ultron in the Vision show, which may be called Vision Quest. We don't know. How he's going to return, it's pretty nebulous. Could all be flashback stuff. This makes me, I mean, this makes me happy. Yeah? I thought you didn't like that iteration. <clears throat> no, no, no. I hate the fact that they took a villain like Ultron and killed him off. When we all know that it's nearly impossible to fucking do. So, if they're going to do this, I say, yay, thanks for listening. That's good. Yeah. Oh, I got cashing. Nicholas Cage is going to be playing John Madden. Oh, yeah, that's right. In the John Madden biopic. Alright. I'm pretty sure this is going to go direct, directly to Netflix. Yeah. Maybe a Prime. Maybe it's, it's going to be a streamer first. Oh, yeah. And I'm willing to bet he's in it for about five months. It, it's his biopic. No, it's not. It's a biopic about the creation of the John Madden video game. Okay. It's not about Madden. He's going to pop up in it for five seconds in the beginning, a minute and a half toward the middle. He's going to be sprinkled in there at best, I say. Uh, yeah. Much like the movie with him in it that I just watched recently that I'll give a review on shortly. Riverdale's Camila Mendez will be playing Tila in the live-action He-Man movie that's apparently going to be made this time. The long-suffering Masters of the Universe film? Yes. See it when I believe it. Katie Seagal has been cast in One Piece Season 2 as Dr. Kureha. Which which people wanted uh, Jamie Lee Curtis to play. She also wanted to play that role. But uh, still not bad. I, like, I enjoy uh, Katie Seagal. Let's see. That's that. Very happy. Uh, Maniacs. Yeah. Pretty good. Joe, you're making very funny faces at your drink. Is it a skunky? It's not good. The The grapefruit one is so much better. This is the pineapple version. Of the oh, the pineapple, pineapple one sucks. Oh, uh, yeah. It's good. No, it took, a, it took a soda. Yeah. Too it's sweet. Not, the, the, the grapefruit one is so much better. Yeah. This is kind of gross. Tim uh, Curry yeah. will be returning to the big screen for the first time in more than a decade with Stream. Who's Tim Curry? Tim Curry's doing well enough to come back to acting. Yeah. That's good. Tim That's Curry fun. was... Yeah. He was the original Pennywise. He was... Yeah, 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 yeah. I knew that was from there. Yeah. His greatest role ever, Herkama Hermoka, formerly of Romania, now traveling the world doing good. He was hex I No, he was the butler. Mm-hmm. Everyone remember, communism was always a red herring. It was Dr. Frankenfurter. It was, if you're into that movie. Storage career. Yeah. Massive, excellent career. But yeah, Tim Curry. I had a stroke about ten years ago. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. He, was, he was not doing well. Apparently yeah. he's recovered well, though. Yeah. yeah. Get these back. But he was, he's always a force on the screen. Like He's always like a... Uh, Noticeful, he's not like a forgettable guy. Remember Annie? Yeah. He was really good in Annie. He was the major D in Home Alone too. Yes. yes, he was. I love you. <laughs> Mupp- Muppets Treasure Island. Yeah. Yeah, he's Long John Silver. Yeah. Man's incredible. So happy he's getting back to work. Okay, that's casting. Cool. More than a few trailers to speak on. Uh, a bit. Eight? Eight, huh? I All right. A few I missed, but let's jump right in. Superman, the Christopher Reeve story. Uh, try watching this trailer and not get emotional. I don't know what planet you're from. 
can see what you did there. I cried my eyes out, and then I went and watched Superman the movie. <laughs> if the actual film, the actual biography, is put together anything like the trailer was, I'm going to need to watch it in sections. Because it told so much without giving away too much in just like a minute and a half. Yeah. Like the friendship between him and Robin Williams should be a mm. pretty big part. Seeing his son speak. Yeah. And his daughter. Yeah. Seeing any, his three kids, you know, any moment with them is going to be heart wrenching. Uh, is that coming out on Max or is that going to theaters? It's going to theaters. Okay. Really? It's, it is yeah. the first official DC Studios movie. Hmm. Pretty fitting. Uh. Trailer for Sonic 3. And Keanu sounds pretty damn great. Yeah. I think it was an excellent choice for that, though. Sonic and Robotnik are going to have to team up. Surprised it didn't happen in the second one, actually. They like to do that in the bumper movies. And Jim Carrey playing double duty as Robotnik and Robotnik Sr. Yes, this is going to be wacky shit. I am doing, doing his Scrooge voice for all of it. I look forward to watching it up six months after it came out. Justin, why the fuck did you show us? The trailer for <laughs> what the fuck was that? that was, you remember the movie, like what was it? Trolls Two? The guy? Oh my god! Is that the guy? I felt like I was back in Nilbog. Like, wait a minute. Nilbog is goblin spelled backwards. Uh, it it reminded me of the movie Munchies. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, I saw a lot of that in there. Yeah, and like it just brought back childhood. It does seem like critters plus ghoulies plus ghoulies. munchies plus garbage pail kids. Yeah, like, I was going to say Child's Play, but Garbage Pail Kids. They yeah. look much more like Garbage Pail Kids. Yeah. Yeah. It looks horrendous. Yeah. Awful. I'm so going to watch the fuck out of it, though. The the previous movie that guy made, Psycho Gorman, I never saw it, but the trailer looked interesting. It looked a little low budge, but, like, it, it looked like it had interesting concepts going on. This looks like everyone enjoyed his movie but weren't really willing to give him money to make another one but like i'm happy this thing exists it's weird to me that you're not more about it because of your your love for uh what the fuck is that cop thing that i hate oh uh kung fury kung fury i mean this looks nothing like kung fury no it's not kung fury no, the, the cop, it's the cop. It's like a very 80s opening. Kung Fury. Is that Kung Fury? Yeah. One of the Triceracops? Yeah, Triceracop. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this like, so like I don't that. understand. Yes, it is. It really doesn't. That was absolutely surreal. That was next level. So like, is this. That was a fever dream of a, a different party, A party gremlin? This is, I'm happy it came out. Don't get me wrong. The world needs more riffable movies. Yeah. And this is, like, built to be riffed. I hope it's incredible. It might be. Like, the whole premise of a guy with the perfect life that's not the perfect life, he's, he's basically Stu from The Hangover. Yeah. And not quite as bad off. And his girlfriend leaves, and he calls the 1-800 number of a... Yeah. Weird little hops. It's not even like, oh, I want to call this thing because I think I might, like, talk to a girl. But no, it's advertised as a goblin that you can call. A party goblin. A party. It's, it, this looks so fucking wacky and surreal. It might not be my type. I'm all about this. I'm going to give it a go. Dude, I'll eat, it. I'll eat edibles and watch it. The fact that they get, like, sucked into space, like... I, I, they could have just left it at party gremlin goblin thing trashes his house and he's got to make it better by the time his girlfriend gets home. Classic, but they they turned it into uh, Lilo and Stitch. Yeah, I see why you're interested now. Yeah. Uh-huh. Frankie uh, Freak. I'll, I'll watch it rift as fuck. 
and Rick as well. I... I didn't think I was going to be into the Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rohirrim anime because the word anime is attached to it. And I have now a grand aversion to anime. Yes. But it looks like it's got enough Western influence that I could get down on this. Looks beautiful. Looks fucking incredible. It's uh, very, very similar to the style from the dudes who did the Castlevania series and He-Man. Looks a bit smoother though. A little, a little bit yeah, more a bit, high quality anime. They got they they got more money. Oh, this is budgeted. Oh, He's yeah. got all the budget. Yeah. Peter Jackson money. Yeah. But it's but the story is like Eowyn Ar- telling the story of the first why Helm's Deep was Helm's Deep. Is that what it is? Story? Yeah, it's it's her narrating. That's why she's in the trailer live action. But she's a she's in the cast list. That's smart. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this. Yeah, I'll check it out eventually. I don't know where. Yeah. Uh, we did, we did get a new Craven trailer, right? Is we that did. What popped up? I did pop that up. Yes. I don't really give a shit about it. Does anyone here have any thought about it? Positive or negative? Stop. Stop using other Spider-Man villains in the Spider-Man villain movies. That don't usually interact because they're villains they just team up stop please actually stop this whole thing just stop all of it Raven's not uh, Rhino's not a guy in a suit <laughs> no he's the Hulk no basically he transforms at doing back and forth just fine they've done they've done versions of him like that in the comics and shit he's, uh, uh, he's been jacked up on stuff and he you know whatever like the point of the character is a guy who makes a bad decision and gets stuck in this this armor, this 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 costume. It's not always armor. This, this this rhino costume, whatever it may be, he gets yeah. stuck in this thing because he went down the wrong road, and he's got to live with that. This doesn't seem like it's going to be that. That, but that's just a single nitpick on this potential waste of millions of dollars. It feels like it's craven time. Is what I'm saying. Listen, I can respect Morbius. <sighs> you have decided Morbius, and I don't know why. I don't think I'm, I'm going to be able. To, I don't think I'm going to be able to defend Craven. Uh-huh. Aaron Taylor Johnson. I think he's a better actor than Leto. Oh yeah, I love yeah, him. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Kick Ass was on while we were down there too, and I caught the tail end of it. It's mind blowing how much he's grown up, how yeah. different a person he is now. That you know who's uh, Charlie Chaplin in uh, Shanghai Nights? I did not know that. Really? Yeah, he was the little kid that was, like, helping them out. Yeah. I'll have to go check that out. How young was he? Was he, like, preteen or yeah, something? Yeah, he'd been real young. He was, yeah. like, 12, I guess, yeah. Man. He's the I've... front runner to play Bond. Yeah, you see it in his face. Like, when you watch it, and you go, oh, shit, it is him. Yeah, but uh, Craven. Then there's Craven. Uh, any more? You have uh, that's all the trailers I have. There were others, right? You said eight. Yeah, I definitely. Missed. So uh, they dropped the trailer for a movie called Y Two K. That does look interesting. It does. <laughs> As a person who's lived through it, like we all were, seeing young people kind of play with the notion of what it was like during the hysteria and turning it into a sci-fi story. It looks like that crappy Jamie Lee Curtis movie, Virus. Yeah. Yeah, this is very, like, Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse style. Yeah. Should be fun. Yeah. Anything with, uh, what's his name from Deadpool 2 in it. Yeah. Uh, we got the trailer from Megalopolis. We've had a trailer for Megalopolis. Is this a new one? I guess. Yeah. This is the only one I remember seeing. This one? One dropped Not... a while ago. Didn't this reveal much. New. Does this thing reveal much about plot? Because I didn't, like, I saw it and I was like, I... Kinda? I don't know if I could watch yeah, it. Yeah, kind of. Ish? Ish? Yeah. But the cast is stacked. Of course it is. It is stacked. Coppola. Yeah. Anyone Coppola calls is going to clear their schedule. He got a... 
Connie Cotillone out of, uh, you know, out of wherever she's been doing, because I haven't seen her in years. Well, they, they killed off Adrian, so she has not to be in she's two or three movies. She was the only Cotillone to actually survive the three Godfather movies. The only one. Fun facts with Joe Prado. Adam Driver, Giancarlo Esposito, Aubrey Plaza, now that's a shocker, Shia, John Voight, Lawrence Fishburne, Ty Shire, Jason Schwartzman, uh, the, uh, was kind of, no, lots of, lots of faces you recognize, but maybe not names, D.B. Sweeney, D.B. Sweeney. Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> really? Yeah. He's at the end of the trailer. Yeah. James Ramar. You don't know the name, but you'll know the face. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a lot of movie that I don't know if I'm interested in. Yeah. You know, it's going to be three plus hours, but it's going to be... Like, easy. Oh, easy yeah. three plus hours. I'll probably watch it when it's on, like, Max or something. I'm with, not gonna with, like, a but... fucking eight-hour director's cut. Prepare okay. to be shocked. Two hours and 18 minutes. Shut the fuck up. That's short. No way. Yeah. I mean, for a Coppola movie, dude, Apocalypse Now was three plus hours. Well, you know it's going to have a redux eventually. There will be Megalopolis Megalodon. <laughs> yeah. Megalodon. 16 Opolis. hours. Strap in, fuckers. Uh, and the last trailer. A new Amazon Prime series called Secret Level. Oh, yes, this. This does look very intriguing. An anthology series based on multiple game IPs. And I say game IPs, not just video games, because there is a Dungeons & Dragons episode. Yeah. Gaming in general. And it's not just like we're going to create generic versions of characters you love to tell stories that the owners would not let us. No. They're doing a Kratos story. They're doing a Mega Man story. They're, they're using a lot of well-established characters. And I'm, I'm guessing creating a few of their own. But it's the same people that made Love, Death, and Robots. Yeah. So they really know how to tell interesting anthology stories. That I'll be checking out. Love me an anthology series. Okay. I, I have three reviews. I also have three reviews. Okay. My first one, I watched five minutes worth of the Rick and Morty anime. That's one of my reviews, too. I watched the whole episode. I fucking can't. I just can't. Sorry, I'm, it, it, need, it needs to be a very special episode. Hang, hang on, my attention. hang on a second. We are very echoey. Is anybody yeah, else here? I hear it. Vinny, what are you doing? You're muted. Nothing yet, I just muted it when you said it was echoey. Don't mute. Don't mute. Don't mute. Red letter, Joe. Joe, letter. Joe mute. What, mute? Mute. Joe. Bucky. Still there. Yippee. Vinny, you mute. Muted. Hello. Muted. Hello. Muted. 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 Hello. Hello. It might be Vinny. Hello. It might be there. <laughs> Alright. Vinny, pop in and out when you have something to say. <laughs> Thank you. Don't be dick. Uh, so yeah, let's let's talk Rick and Morty anime. You lasted five minutes. I lasted through the opening sequence, the actual sequence of character stuff. I liked. And then I liked the opening sequence. The opening song happened, and I'm like, "What the fuck is going on here?" I liked this that. This is way too anime for me. Yeah. Uh, they don't even show up in it. Like Rick and Morty aren't a part of the first five minutes. No, but they're majority of the rest of the episode. Is it their it actual is, voices? It is no. They're similar, but it's not the guys who do them for the regular show, which I appreciate, honestly. Because it is both similar, yet so completely fucking different. And Are I, their characters I, the same? Are they combative? And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but I appreciate what they're doing. I don't love it. 
because I, I enjoy Rick and Morty so much as it is. When they announced they were doing this, I thought it was going to be just like an episode. They were going to pull a South Park, and they are going to do, we're doing a one-off Rick and Morty anime episode. Okay, cool. But, like, when they announced it was a series, I'm like, I don't know. And after watching the first episode, I was still, I don't know. Oh, I know. I, I, know I knew, I knew, I knew instantly, if you or Vinny were to watch it, you'd fucking hate it. I like anime. I know you like anime. Trust me. You have to struggle through the butt fruit on this one to get to the end to be like, okay. I struggle with nothing. Yeah. We know. Uh, so, like... It's Rick and Morty because of the characters being the way they are. It's not because this is clearly going to tell one singular story throughout. It's not episodic. Yeah. Or not like, no, it's like, it's just, yeah, it's just, we're getting one straight story through the entire thing. It's very not Rick and Morty. Right. Which again, if you're going to do something like this, I do appreciate as a watcher of the original show. I didn't want to see a rehash of that show just done in anime style. That in and of itself could be interesting. There's it enough could be, but a whole series would have... Like, uh, as an episode, it would have been incredible. As a yeah. whole series, no. I oh. I plan on watching another episode or two. If it hooks me, I'll finish it. But, like, it's it is it's different. I was wrong. I have a. I watched two more episodes of Batman the Cape Crusader. Oh, nice. I absolutely love what they did with Firebug. Mm-hmm. That episode's like, awesome. Showing just how corrupt the police are. Mm-hmm. And I, yeah. when I first saw the images of Harley Quinn, I thought it was going to be the worst part of the show. I don't love the costume, but I love the concept of what they've done with her character that they did, created of her is amazing. Did you get that far, Justin? I haven't gone back. I watched episode two and that, I was just like, I'll get to it. Yeah. I finished it too. Now, I know I know. I harp on the notion that like the Joker 2 isn't my Harley because it's a totally different origin. Well, this is a completely and utterly and totally different version of the character, but I love the concept that they use. Like, how instead of her being abused by someone and taken advantage of, she's using her uh, psychiatric skills to control other people. She, uh, they did, they did a Harley podcast Mm. uh, with Christina Ricci as Harley. And it was pretty much just like her time in Arkham meeting Joker and all that shit. That sounds very similar to what they did in that story. Yeah, because she played Harley. She's Harley in this show? I'm pretty sure she played Harley. No, or is she Catwoman? No, she's Catwoman. That's right, she's Catwoman. Yeah, she's Catwoman. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this is... Uh, I, I don't know, because it's, it's unlike any other version of the character. Joker has nothing to do with it. If you Well, yeah, I would, I would assume... I'm just saying, like... Sounds like they took beats from that oh. because Jamie Chung is nice. Harley. They uh, in that story, it was very much Harley used her ability as a psychiatrist to do a lot of shit and to like trick even the Joker into thinking and doing things. That's a good take on it. Yeah. Like she's very independent in this one. She's mm-hmm. she's boss lady. Yeah. She's running a show. It would be interesting to see her butt heads with a fully formed version of the Joker. I don't think it would be anything like the classic version. It could maybe work together, but you'd have to show her a lot of respect because she is she's a lot more like the Mad Hatter in this version. Mm, nice. Yeah. I'm very happy with that. Looking forward to slowly drip feeding that one. Can we uh, talk about Catwoman wearing a dress and fucking high heels to Purple? Classic Batwoman. They're Very going 40s. straight up 40s Batwoman. It's not my favorite style either. I'll be on that. Catwoman or Batwoman? Batwoman. Catwoman. 
Yeah. Because I, I found that to be so fucking stupid. I, they're straight up referencing the original costume for her. I hope it doesn't stick. If yeah, it comes well, they, again. they did it with uh, Barbara. She was chasing some dude. Firefly, I think, maybe. And she's also high heels. And I'm like, no. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. But it, it was the... It's the style at the time. It's a cartoon. Yeah, it's whatever. I, I, that, uh, that stuff burns me out. Uh, I watched Jackpot Saturday night. Or we Sunday we almost... Year. We almost watched it last night. Hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Some twisty turny in there. It's great to see Simu Liu and uh, Aquafina working together again. Uh, her rapport with John Cena is excellent. He's a guy either they just have they have great chemistry or he can just work with anybody. Because charming as ever. The fight scenes in it, the action is the weakest part of it. Really? Yeah. Cause they, you could see how staged they are at some moments. They're creative. There's some funny shit that happens in the fight scenes, but it's not the strong point of it. This is the same guy who did the Heat and my I Spy, not I Spy, uh, just Spy. That's right, with Melissa McCarthy and the Ghostbusters 2016 movie. Paul Feig. He knows how to do comedy, and he knows how to pick people to do comedy, but action has never really been the strongest suit. Still. So, Totally worth checking out. Uh, my last review, I also watched Long Legs. Am I alone in this? Is it as good as they say? I I was interested throughout. It, it, it sucked me in, for sure. It was a well-done horror movie. At the two-thirds point, I guess you would say, there she goes to some place... And you, you see what the twist is. It's almost too obvious what's happening, but when it unfolds, it's pretty fucked up. Uh, if I were to describe it somewhat to someone, imagine if Stanley Kubrick directed Silence of the Lambs from a rewrite by Stephen King. Oh, God. Yeah. Huh. There's definitely some supernatural metaphysical shit going on. Every scene is center framed. It is straight up his shining sequences. It, it's that phase from Kubrick all over. It. They do something very interesting with the aspect ratio, though. And it's, it's set in the 90s, which is another callback to Silence of the Lambs. You're following an FBI agent, another callback to that. Anytime it cuts back to the 70s, though, everything is framed in like a one to one ratio. And the corners are rounded, so it's like you're looking at either a Polaroid uh, uh-huh. or one of those older style like printed sixteen books. mil. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really weird, and it there's one point where it goes back in time and does a shot like that, and they very slowly stretch the aspect ratio, but it, the corners stay rounded, and you don't notice it like until it disappears, and you're now back at like sixteen nine. Incredible cinematography, really great palette work, and Nicolas Cage is the most Nicolas Cage Nicolas Cage has ever Nicolas Caged. <laughs> really? But you can't recognize him at all. Okay. He's under. It's great makeup too. You know it's him, but as you're looking at it, you're like, I I can't see him in it anymore, and it doesn't look fake. It looks like a guy with a really weird, fucked up face. Bravo. All around bravo on it. It's worth checking out if you enjoy creepy horror. Okay. Who's got reviews for you? I do. Go, Joe. So, since you guys went on vacation, I binge-watched the last half of season four of The Boys. Yay! Bro. Yeah. Bro. Like... You're experiencing this differently than the rest of us because we've all watched it week to week. Mm-hmm. You gorged on this over like a, less than a month. The mm-hmm. entire series plus Gen V. Mm-hmm. It's a lot Dude. to take in. Yeah, like every time it just kept getting weirder and weirder, but that ending I did not see coming. That whole last episode I didn't see coming. There's stuff in there that should have been obvious, like Homelander, where Homelander ends and the 
and the end of the last season, setting up where we are now in real life, which is what they've been paralleling the entire yeah. time politically, it makes so much sense that he'd be in a position of power like that. The Jeffrey Dean Morgan thing blew me away. I kind of called that halfway through the season. Really? I don't know if I said it to the group. but well, We said it to each other. Yeah. It was pretty obvious. You never see him talk to anyone else. You don't. But the reveal was great. Yeah. When he tells the ghost of Butcher's wife to shut up. Yeah. Joe. Yeah. How about Huey and Tech Knight's sex dungeon? (laughs) Oh, God. Between that and fucking Animal Farm, I just like... It's just, what the fuck... I'm so glad Tech Knight got it, though. I'm so oh, happy he fucking The way it got happened, his. too. Yeah. His uh, Alfred found a conscience. Mm-hmm. And I gotta say, that was the one sequence where I felt, not the most uncomfortable, but the most afraid for Stewie. Because you could, for, for Huey, you could see them, like, all right, he's not going to die in this scene. But he could really get fucked up. Yeah. He could, he could lose a limb, you could just like, or he could just get violated in a horrendous mm-hmm. way, and they don't get there quick enough. It worked out well enough for him yeah. but that was scary he got sprayed in the face yes he did yeah. but I'm, he got slimed uh, wow. but I think since I know Gen V and what characters made it kind of see where it could end because I have a feeling Butcher, Butcher's not getting redeemed no, he, he's not well, getting redeemed. Maybe Ryan in the is going to kill him. Ryan's maybe in the last him. moments, I think Brian. I think Ryan's going to have to kill both of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I'm curious with Ashley what happened. Like, what's going to happen? Yeah, that was the biggest question mark I have coming out of that. Like, what's she going to be? Mm-hmm. It, either she comes out of it with some incredible ability that makes her. Not invulnerable, but able to to keep her to watch her back, or some really shit. She just looks weird now. Mm. She's just like a mutant. It doesn't have any cool powers, and she's in an even worse position now. A train somewhere. I think A train. I think it's A train and uh, what's her face are going to be the ones that break everybody out. Starlight. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and I didn't, like, I knew Newman was going to die. I didn't expect it that way. I didn't see that coming. I did not. I, well, Facebook spoiler, spoiled her, her her dying. So I knew it was coming. I just didn't know how. But when it happened, I'm like, fuck. Like, I feel bad for that kid, man. Yeah. Yeah, what happened to Zoe? Where, where did she go? They sent her to the exact same oh, yeah, children's to school, the, to the home yeah. that her mom grew up in for her. Uh, and Stan Edgar is still somewhere. Yeah. Yep. He's, so, He's going to be the wild card. Do you think he yeah. uses his power, <clears throat> his natural power, to, to influence things, or does he uh, V up? I think he's going to use his... I think he's going to be the Nick Fury of this shit. Mm. Yeah. Um, I do have to say, at, for the whole series, fucking M.M. is my all-time favorite character. Like, I fucking love M.M. Frenchie and, and Kimiko are... Oh, dude, like my... when she yelled at the end, that was fucking heartbreaking. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you hear the fan name for their couple? Mm-mm. Kimchi? Oh. <laughs> fucking great. <laughs> I, I want them to have a happy ending. I don't I don't want anything bad. Well if to it's anything like the comics, none of them get a fucking happy ending. Yeah. The most you're gonna get is neutral at best. If you could find neutral in that world. There is no neutral in that world. No. You know how it all ends, right? I remember how it all ends. Yeah. Butcher goes crazy essentially and kills the whole team. Yep. That well, didn't Anthony Starr say he wants to, uh, like, after it, the final season, end it with a movie? Yeah, I don't think he wants to get the character up. 
think he's having too much fun. I thought he, he, he wants to get out of a superhero show. His, his shit, his <laughs> behind the scenes shit is so funny. Just, it's the most one of the most twisted characters ever. One of the mm-hmm. scariest versions of that uh, power fantasy ever. And now, Soldier Boy return? Mm-hmm. Question mark. Do they try to bond the two of them? Try to have all three generations together? Like, how well, poorly would Soldier Boy react to Ryan? Padalecki's going to be on next season too. Mm-hmm. So many questions. Yeah, lots and lots of questions. Can't come quick enough. Uh, any other reviews? I got two more. Okay. Yeah, I got a couple. What do you got, Ben? Well, I told you guys I saw Alien Romulus. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking about it? seeing it. So. I mean, it's, it's not a bad movie. I feel like, I mean, how many aliens can you make? At this point, eight, nine? Nine. Two. If you include the games. That's not Too many. Uh, But it was like, I don't know if they were did in the other ones, I never noticed it, but the the baby aliens have dicks, (laughs) and they fucking cock slap everybody until it gets in their mouth, and then they just start, like, they start just, like, face fucking everybody as they try to, like, you know. I love uh, there's beautiful time for Kyle. I, I love that Kyle jumps on the moment when he talks about face fucking. <laughs> like well, when you think about it, they 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 jam their dick down your throat, mm-hmm. fill your belly up with alien cum, then <laughs> an alien explodes out of your chest. Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's basically it. Mm-hmm. And then there was a scene where like uh, they're looking in a room and one jumps on the window. In you know scary fashion, but then all of a sudden you just see a floppy alien dick smack in the window. Also, hilarious. That's the only... I was the only one laughing in the movie theater. I was just <laughs> the fuck up like a child, and like this guy's this alien's dick is just smacking windows. Yeah, I think the only time they really showed him before was maybe in Alien vs Predator. Might have been you might have seen it for a second uh, in Alien. Like, pull it out. Yeah. yeah. But never like the yeah. Never doing the the, the helicopter. <laughs> okay, and then I don't want to spoil anything, but like the the overall the the, the last thing did you show a giant alien pussy? Ooh. Yeah, it's like it looks like the Mercedes sign, kind of. <laughs> um, don't get it, but I guess they had to. They had to do it. Not a lot of people had it, wanted it, but they got it. You got alien dick. You got alien pussy. No alien tit, conversely. They don't really feed that way, I guess. Yeah. How was the movie, though? Six, six out of ten. Okay. But like five eight, five eight to six. Not a bad movie. We'll never watch it again. But. You know, those are pretty high numbers from you. Yeah, it's got to be like a seven five, close to an eight in real life. No, it's 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 a good movie, but like again, it's what uh, what else do you watch? I finished Umbrella Academy. Oh, uh, we didn't start the last season yet. Yeah, you don't have to. I did. I did read two articles saying that it was the worst of all four seasons. Both of them agreed. I've yeah. heard. I've heard similar things. Um, it's definitely a way to end the show. Um, there's really no resolve for the overall theme of the show, in my opinion, and uh, I don't know. Yeah, it sucked. I wanted to like it. Diego's my favorite. Diego saves it with his moments. Because he's such a bro, but... Diego reminds me of John every season. Yeah. Yeah. Every season. (sighs) 
I'm going to be honest there, just hurtful. Maybe both. It's, it's, it's like, it's accurate. And Kyle's laughing because he is aware of how fucking accurate it is. Well, I, no, I, I mean, you're not wrong. But, no. it, it only reminds me of John if you're, if you're Luther. That's fair. Oh, yeah. That is a hundred percent. If Justin's Luther, then Diego's definitely John. Yeah. So that would make me five, obviously. Make you Klaus. I was going to say, you guys going to say Klaus. You're Klaus. Klaus? Yeah. Please. It's not even I a heard question. Rumor. It's not even a question. I'm more like the dad than Klaus. You know what? Do you know what? That childhood wise, it would work if Vinny was Klaus and I was Ben. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Work. That would work, because yeah. I didn't really talk to you guys when Vinny was there. <laughs> Vinny was the only one who ever talked to me. Right. I'm very sociable. Uh, is that it for your reviews? But yeah. Alien Romulus, 5-9, Umbrella <laughs> Academy, Season 4, 3. Okay. Three? Swinging, at, swinging at the dirt. He gave it a three. Three? Yeah. Well, I guess I definitely am going to start watching The Boys next then. Yeah, watch The Boys. always recommended. Yeah. Um, Ashley and I today came to the realization that next week when Zach starts school, uh, we're going to be able to go to the movies. Oh, I thought you were going to say you're going to fuck on every surface. Like during the day? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Matinee, baby. Yeah. Do we like, have, like, $300 worth of credit? Yeah, dude. We have <laughs> legit, like, 10 fucking gift cards for movie theaters. Like... Oh, yeah, no. By the way, real quick. Went to a movie theater in Delaware. They had <laughs> better seats with <clears throat> the reclining action. The headrest moved yeah. also. And they had heated seats. That's all. Those got a 10 out of 10. Yeah. Milford Movies 9, Delaware, Dover. Go ahead. Uh, but yeah, we got excited at the thought of this. We were like, oh, we get to go see like movies in the theater again. Ah, that's great. It's not exactly the best time to do it. What? During the day? Now. Uh, let's see what's playing. No, Everyone no, no. I'm not saying, we're, not, we're not saying yeah. we're like going to go like next week i'm saying when something comes out that we really want to see and we haven't been able to like a lot of things like honestly if deadpool wolverine's still in theater we might go see that next week it is then we'll probably go we'll probably go catch that because we haven't um last night we watched trigger warning on netflix it is the jessica alba john wick-esque movie She plays a CIA operative who comes home because her dad dies in a cave. It was good. It was a good movie. We didn't expect a lot out of it. We we enjoyed it. Uh, It was a toss-up between that, the new Planet of the Apes, but that was too long because it was pretty late, and uh, Immaculate, which is on Hulu, which is something I wanted to watch. So that horror movie, we did watch the trailer for a while back about... The nun who gets pregnant. Okay. Yeah. All right. The other review I have, uh, since we had a very long drive from here to Florida last week, I listened to the Fellowship of the Ring audiobook narrated by Andy Serkis. And I highly recommend listening to it. Uh, I could. He, he does a great job. But he also does near spot on impressions of everybody who plays the characters in the movies. So, like, when he's doing Frodo, it is very close to Elijah's voice. And when he's, when he's doing, yeah, I know. When he's doing Merry and Pippin, it sounds like them. Like, he does a really good fucking job. He's got such a raspy, deep voice. Yeah, but he, oh, he's he got fucking range, man. He can control it for Golem. He goes really high for Golem. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so I'm like, 
10, 11 chapters in. Because, like, the first 30 minutes is, I guess this was, like, the deluxe edition of the book, is spent going about the history of Hobbit weed. Not kidding. Oh, Toby. <laughs> yeah. So, like, that was cool. Really informative about, like, the history of Hobbit weed and stuff like that. In case you were wondering, man. <laughs> yeah. It was great. And those are my two reviews. Let's get through some news. I didn't have a whole hell of a lot of news, actually. Uh, one thing Kyle might find interesting, Oreo and Coca-Cola are doing a mashup. Yeah. Yeah, you took... That's part of... That was part of food news. Yeah, I figured it was. Yeah. But, like, they're both doing a mashup. Yeah. So there's going to be an Oreo flavored. Coca-Cola. There's an o- Oreo flavored Coca-Cola and a Coca-Cola flavored Oreo. Yeah, that's what I've got here. New limited edition Oreo Coca-Cola sandwich cookie features a red and black color block design on unique base cakes. Chocolate base cake also features Coca-Cola syrup. The other side, a red colored golden cookie, comes embossed with Coca-Cola designs. Uh, Oreo signature white colored cream, and popping candies that say will result in a fizzing Fizz, sensation yeah. yeah and then there's uh, yeah. an oreo flavored coke i gotta be honest <laughs> i think everyone knows what i'm gonna say right now <laughs> good idea but i'm not gonna i still have a headache for the record okay this story is not helping it <laughs> but i don't know which thing pisses me off more <laughs> I don't know, like, if you had to give me a choice between one or the other, I don't know which one I would pick. Not sure which one's the shit and which one's the Cheerios? <laughs> uh, I don't... I don't even know what that means right both, now. Both are bad. Both are bad. Both are... Both are all right in their own respective universes, but put them together. Nah. Yeah, I mean... For out of the gate, you got nothing. I guess, I guess, given the choice, I would have to try the Coke flavored Oreo because it's an Oreo. Okay, that's fair. I don't think I would want to drink a drink that tastes like a cookie. No, if it was milk based, yeah, but it's a soda. So, so I think. Yeah, I still, I, I don't, I just wish that Oreo would stay in their fucking lane. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, Oreo's like the big, Oreo's like the biggest offender of, of this concept. Yeah. It's just like, it's like every two months there's a new fucking Oreo. And I just don't, I don't have time for any of it. You can say it. They're being food sluts. They're putting they themselves out there too. We have to start calling them Oreos. <laughs> I, I that's a good one. That, no, I that's don't. A good you know, name. I'm not big on the shaming thing. I just, you know, I just don't get these crazy kids in their Oreos. <laughs> Oreos is going in the, the title. Thank you. That's all I had for news. It was very, very light. I spent most Wait. of my week. By the way, do you guys know the comedian Sam Morell? No. Uh, New York-based comic. Um, I saw, me and Megan saw him uh, last Thursday at the Stress Factory in New Brunswick. Uh, he was working on material, but still it was hilarious. Just an hour of laughing is just so nice. Great for the soul. <laughs> His opener was good, too. But, uh, yeah, he had some awesome jokes highly recommend it good good does anyone else have any news yeah I got news hang on Uh, Sony has reportedly split with the helmers of the spider verse uh, following a Spider-Man noir dispute. 
I saw something about the budget dispute with Noir. Did they seriously do a complete split with Lord Miller? Yeah. That sucks. They're fairly integral to the whole Spider-Verse thing. It's all going to fall apart now, which is good. Is it? Yeah, I want it to stop so just Marvel gets control of the Spider-Man shit and let's just end the shenanigans. But, like, the Spider-Verse, though, like, the into, across, beyond, that that, stuff. That third movie's already, like, done. It just needed to get animated. There's still a lot of stuff that changes up until the end. I watched a lot of those behind-the-scenes things. They're days before releasing it. They were still figuring out certain things. So, man. It sucks losing important members like producers that deep into the thing. Oh, well, Sony's known for shit like this. Chick-fil-A may be known as one of the masters of the fast food chicken business, but what about as a media brand? In a move few would have guessed, Chick-fil-A has revealed plans to launch its own streaming platform. Please stop. Complete with a slate of original programming to populate it. Yes, you heard that correctly. Chick-fil-A is getting into the streaming business alongside Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Amazon Prime Video, and all the others. According to their trade reports, the fast food firm has been working with a number of major production companies, including some of the studios, to create family-friendly shows, particularly in the unscripted space. Is also in talks to license and acquire content that translates to family-friendly programming and reality shows being the primary focus of what Chick-fil-A is developing in terms of originals, although there is mention that there's also talk of scripted projects and animation. That's what I say. Is it, was that a typo? Did they mean scripted projects? What? As in all of their, all of their shows are based on Bible scriptures? Ah, I see what you did there. There you go. That's good stuff. Good job, Brad. Thanks. Um, I could see VeggieTales going up on that. Yeah, for right. sure. Live yeah. action VeggieTales. It's going to have its own block. Like, you know on Disney Plus, how Marvel and Star Wars have their own? It's going to be VeggieTales is going to take yeah. up half of the screen, and there's going to be a bunch of other small ones you can click on. Why? Because Chick-fil-A money you know what and i have no intention of ever using this but i would like to track it and see how it outperforms <laughs> its competitors <laughs> like what what other streaming services are the first ones that leapfrogs how fucking amazing would it be if this is so successful they buy warner brothers they buy time warner they buy netflix it's them and but, disney yes well I, I think this is starting the war that the movie Demolition Man spoke about because <laughs> oh, okay. it's not on top. Yo, fast food wars are beginning. Demolition Man was on the other night on one of the channels in the hotel. So James, good. James and I watched it. What did you like it? Yeah, he loved. He loved Demolition Man. So we did. Good. A, we didn't exposing uh, James with it. He's like that was great. <laughs> timeless movie. Um, some Joker news. One. Oh. Todd Phillips was like everything you love about Harley Quinn don't expect it in this version sweet and we're like okay and then he dropped this fucking golden nugget and he was like oh by the way the movie opens with a Looney Tunes esque animated segment featuring Joaquin Phoenix's Joker sweet uh, <laughs> he's gotta be trolling you now he's just gotta be fucking with people no, no, no. It's confirmed. That's, this is how this movie's going to open. That's, that's taking a big swing. Credit where it's due. I feel like Todd Phillips is like, I wanted to do that movie, but I didn't want to make a sequel. And then they made me make a sequel. So I'm going to make it so that no one wants me to make another fucking sequel. You think he's going to go bigger, longer on cut? Because like, didn't South Park really want to make Team America, and they just made the South Park movie because they wanted to make other movies? Yeah, I think so. But like, Team America. I mean, South Park movie was like really good in concept, and it was musical. It got them to do something they didn't normally do at the show. It was a parody on itself, wasn't it? 
like uh, the movie was the movie they saw was like a parody on the movie that they made a bunch of F-bombs is singing yeah Oscar nominated movie yeah um but like I really think Todd Phillips is just like well it's time to burn all the bridges I I think maybe but also I, I feel like he's not scared to like shoot his shot make something different because that, that's that was kind of his like thesis for the DC alternate universe and he succeeded with the first one I feel like it was like I'm picturing the board meeting that happened like oh the first one was so successful we really want you to make a second one I I don't think I want to total control total control total control, yeah. total control. Okay. Let, final cut Total control. I can do whatever I want. Total control. Have at it, Todd. I'm going to do an animated sequence of being in. Total control, Todd. Total control. You made us a billion dollars. Total control. We trust you. But, um, well, I think this might be a fuck you to the uh, production because he and Joaquin were like, we'll do it if we do it almost right away. But if you guys fucking keep your thumbs up your ass, we got other shit to do. And they're like, uh, and then they, they green it. He's like, all right, I guess we'll do it in two years, even though I wanted to do it right away. And they're like, <laughs> you got it, pal. And he's like, give, give me, give me a fucking cartoonist right now. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I don't know what the fuck this thing's gonna even be like. It's going to be entertaining. It'll definitely be that. It's totally going to be a movie. Maybe. It'll be better than Alien Romulus, I bet. <laughs> Will it be as good as Frankie Frico, though? That's the question. No. The answer is no. All right. Before, we, is. before we talk about our Disney trip, it's food news time. Aldi's has a bunch of fall flavors hitting various items like wafer rolls, coffees, pretzels, kettle corn. There's pumpkin spice, salted caramel, maple pecan pie, yada, yada, yada. Go get those. Nestle's Toll House has been putting out a giant tub of chocolate chip cookie dough for years now. Well, finally, sugar cookie dough is getting its due. It, it is now going to be available in the same giant tub. That's very good news. This is actually great food news because that's the only way I make fresh cookies. Yeah. Jenny's Ice Cream has Cookies in Cream, a the darkest chocolate cookies with white chocolate flecks and vanilla scented cream. Where did where did everybody go? They've gone to Jason's Furniture. <laughs> in Neptune City. We have no Kyle. Ben's back. I'm here. Ben's back. Oh, Ben's back. Okay, cool. I'm here. I was just I'm, I'm making coffee. Out. I'm listening. No, oh, Kyle. Is back. He's here. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, Carvel is releasing pumpkin cheesecake ice cream this year. For you basic white bitches. Uh, nothing bunt cakes is getting into the strawberry frosted pop tart game. Uh, started by Sinful Creations by Justin. I just want to say that I started the trend, so fuck you. Man, everybody's biting off our shit lately. I know. Totino's Pizza Rolls has a new spicy Hellfire Club pepperoni dropping for the the upcoming season of uh, The Stranger Things. I will not have it, but... Okay. Remember the last time I had a Totino's pizza roll? Jones' soda has two Halloween flavors, zombie juice and bloodsucker. Zombie juice. Zombie juice. Oi, boys. <laughs> uh, Hostess boy. is dropping their line of spooky season stuff. Franken cakes, scary cakes, spooky Twinkies, pumpkin spice Twinkies, pumpkin cupcakes, and maple glazed donuts. Maple Glaze Donuts. That sounds yeah. awesome. Mm. 
Uh, <laughs> Cafe Valley Mini Cupcakes available at Walmart comes in new 7 Up and Crush Orange flavors. Alright, uh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> the last one was good. This one, not, not as good. Uh, Van Leeuwen Ice Cream and Liquid Death are getting together on a collab for Hot Fudge Sunday flavored sparkling water. Ew. Yeah. Yep. Just stop. I thought you were going to say water-flavored ice cream. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even fucking joking. That's what I thought you were going to say. I wouldn't be shocked at this point. Uh, it tastes just like natural spring water. Planters is dropping apple cider donut-flavored cashews this fall season. That sounds pretty good, honestly. DJ Khaled and Nesquik are combining their influence for a cinnamon bun flavored called Another Bun. <laughs> That's not true, uh, is it? Yes, it is absolutely you true. You made that up. I did not. You know what? You should you should eat will we get me back into this segment is you just make up <laughs> one story and see if I can pick it out. Which one is not real? It is forcing to focus. Legit real. <laughs> oh, that's great. Cinnabon is collabing with Warheads. They have a blue raspberry Warhead chalada, and because nothing makes me think cinnamon rolls more than Warhead candies, they have put crushed Warheads on top of cinnamon rolls. Available available in blue raspberry, green apple, and watermelon. Gross. It feels like life is testing me. Yeah. I like I like sweet stuff. I cannot lie. But, like, no. You know, you know what? If it was just, like, a green apple flavored something else, I could be in on that. Because green apple with the cinnamon yeah, of, of cinnamon would work. I don't like the idea of either of those other flavors in general. I just don't like the sour. But especially a sour version yeah. of them. Like, the drink is one thing, right? The drink is fine. Like, a sour drink sure. is Sure. Yeah. Uh, Tasty Cake is dropping their seasonal selection. Pumpkin Spice Mini Donuts, Caramel Apple Mini Donuts, Tasty Cake Creepy Cakes, Caramel caramel Apple Hand Pies, and Pumpkin Cheesecake Tasty Cake Pies. Ooh, delicious. Over at Target, you can get Caramel Apple Pie Ice Cream and Pecan Pie Ice Cream from Favorite Day. They also have a Pumpkin Spice Cream Cookie and a Jack-O-Lantern Cream Cookie. Along with pumpkin spice ice cream bonbons, pumpkin spice cookies with maple flavored frosting, ghostly treats, cake pops, and apple cinnamon donut mix. Okay. I think we just need to normalize the fact that everything's getting a pumpkin spice version. Yeah. Everything. It's not news anymore. Every single thing's going to get pumpkin spice. Yes, Kyle. I have, a, I have a question. Yeah. So, pecan pie flavored ice cream. You said that was at Walmart? Target. Target. Oh, I mean that might that might be the first thing you ever bring up on this that I actually try. Because I mean that's my favorite kind of pie. Yeah. So if I can just take away one step to make my ideal dessert, a la mode. It's already. Yeah, it's already, already a la mode. It's, already. Yeah. Uh, Gulaid. Voila, mode. Ghoulade is back this spooky season. It's been missing for a couple years, but it is back. Scary Berry Ghoulade. Ego is invading all sorts of breakfast items because now Ego has its own line of coffee. Cinnamon Toast, Maple Syrup, Vanilla Blueberry, and Chocolate Chip Ego coffees are available in K-Cups at Walmart, Amazon, and Target. Well, is that one when do this to me? Because I like to bring you up and then bring you down. Yeah, don't just stop. I'm already down. I started the show down. I know. That's why I joined an hour and a half late. I know, but like, I'm, we're going to bring you up with the stories of Disney, trust me. Things happen. I don't know. Uncrustables <laughs> has a peanut butter and honey sandwich now. For anybody that's interested in that combo. For anyone that's three years old. Mike, they're bringing back Slice. 
the soda? The soda. In yeah. orange, cola, lemon, lime, and grapefruit, but they're going to have prebiotics and probiotics in them. Slice is becoming health conscious? Yes. I gotta try it. Yeah. Although I wouldn't even know what it tasted like back in the day. I have no memory Fucking, of it. Except... I loved orange slice, man. It was the I, most sugary of the orange sodas, I guess. I knew I drank a lot of it. I just don't. I don't think like if when it hits my tongue, I'll, nostalgia will kick yeah. in. I'm not sure. Bugles has new hot and cheesy flavored featuring Tabasco. Uh, Skittle said, "Hey, assholes." Stop taking our product and freeze drying it and making money off of us. So the Skittles is putting out Skittles popped. Their own freeze dried candy. Okay. In both the sour Skittles and original Skittles flavors. This could be really good. Yeah. Because these places that do it have a massive markup on them. Yeah. So it's like it's ridiculous. You can only get it every once in a while. If they can sell it at normal MSRP, yeah. man, I'll be eating this shit constantly. This will be horrendous for my diabetes. <laughs> and the last bit of food news I have is peanut butter and jelly M&Ms are coming soon. Uh, what time? I don't know about this. Anymore? Is it, is it like half a bag is peanut butter and half the bag is jelly? No, it is peanut butter and jelly in each M&M. Because I think it would be pretty funny if they were all the same colors and just half the bag was peanut butter and half the <laughs> bag was jelly. I mean, I, I can understand the value in that. Because for someone who's very particular about my balance of peanut butter and jelly in a sandwich, it would be pretty funny to have to navigate that garbage of a handful of jelly. Yeah, you say funny, I think you'd be pissed off by the second handful. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I mean, I would never, I would get a good laugh out of the first time I tried to eat them. Then I'd be like, well, I'm never eating these again. Well, fuck this. All right. <clears throat> Mike and then myself just came back from Disney, and we're going to talk about it. Mike has a, a list of things that he took of note. I will fill in stuff, uh, and I'm yes. going to lead the conversation. So, as everybody on the show knows, and people that listened to the show that came out the week before we left, I fucked up the date of the big order that I was supposed to do the week we left. Uh, It's fine. It got delivered. Everything's great. So, like, the day after then became like a, hey, I don't have to run around like an asshole day. This is going to be really nice. I'll get some stuff done. Be able to chill before the drive. So the evening is upon us. I've made sandwiches for everybody for the the, the drive because we were going to drive overnight into the day. And uh, we we were going to agree on a place to meet for the drive. And this turned into a multi-hour long argument of where to meet. My sister and her husband... Mike and my father were all at my sister's house. And they wanted to meet at a Wawa that was close to them. Like, literally around the corner from them. Understandable. I get that. Nice and close. My sister's house is already 14 to 15 minutes away from my house. In the opposite direction of which I need to go. So I said, hey, let's make it somewhat fair. And we'll go to the other Wawa on Pomona Road. And we could just drive over the train tracks and get on the expressway. Fucking easy peasy. At least so I thought. Uh, no, apparently not. Because the argument for hours was... But... But it's closer for us to go to the other one. Yeah, it's fucking closer for you. But I'm passing the parkway... Already... To come meet you closer to your house... When I could just get on the parkway and then the expressway... And fucking I'm good to go. Like, I am going out of my way... So they're like, well, just meet us there. And I was like, no, I don't want to drive past your fucking house to go to the other Wawa. Just meet me there. It's it's still close for you. It's only a four-minute drive, but it's like a nine-minute drive for me instead of a 15-minute drive. Like, why can't... 
So this goes on for hours until I was like, listen, I did you the fucking favor of making you your lunches for the next day. You're going to do me the favor of meeting me there. Otherwise, we're going to meet on the fucking drive somewhere. Because I'm not driving extra distance. Yeah, there was some to do about that in the car. Not a lot, but like no one ever brought up the fact that it's it's actually closer to where you wanted to meet. Like where you wanted to meet made more sense to you. Yeah. There was just never any notion of why you wanted to meet there. Like when the question was brought up, well, why? No one ever had an answer. But but I explained it to them on the phone. Yeah, several times. With more proof that when you give reasons to people that they don't like, they just forget them. Yes. <clears throat> so, we begin our travels. Wait, wait, wait. So, what was the end of that? Where did you end up meeting? Where I wanted to. Because <laughs> I said, well, because I had their lunch. What were they going to say? No? All right, fine, don't eat. That's actually like, it, well, you suggested, uh, assuming that you really did suggest that out of the gate, it's like, it's like a pretty good, I mean, it's funny that, like... It is your option for wah 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 or wah wah. But dude, to like, meet when you've already made sandwiches, that was my suggestion though. From the gate, no, no, the wah wah that's in the middle. Yeah, not your wah wah and not their wah wah, right. but the wah wah that's actually in, in the, the middle. I mean, it's funny. Right. That, that was like that was like the compromise suggestion, but you made it out of the gate. Yeah. <laughs> M- Mike will back me on this. I tried my damnness the entire trip to be like the most non-aggro version of myself I've ever been. Had that work out? Forever. It didn't last forever. Didn't last forever. But I did... Doesn't a, it it, it didn't a, last until you got to Disney. It was a... No, it, I mean, kind of. It was a good effort. I, I give myself credit. I mean, that's, that's all that matters, right? Even, you well, give no. give yourself because, credit? Because even Ashley was like, you had your moments, but like, yes... Given the things that had happened on this trip, she's like, I am shocked you were as mellow as you were about things. Well, I think, given, Mike, given you... the fact that certain people weren't on this trip, I'm pretty sure I cannot wait to see who yeah, the next people is. Let's just the fucking, next sure of annoying yeah, work tone, it, tone it down. Uh, Mike, can you concur? Uh, yeah, there was, there was a lot of things that that happened that's like frustrating unnecessarily frustrating that yeah. you didn't bring up that you just let roll off like completely not me it would to, to call these things out would just come up the worst <laughs> most of the time yeah just yes. a lot going on anyway so it's just fuck it let's just keep moving so we we head out All right we're doing good we're making okay time uh, because Keith was sleeping and then he of cherry sized bladder wakes up and it becomes a constant like they're texting me they're like how's your gas instead of just being like we have to pee again the the text was always like how's your gas you guys we're only at a fucking half a tank what do you mean how's my gas like great we should only have to stop three fucking times to get down there we stopped like six now I kept getting because I wasn't paying attention to messages I kept getting oh they're low on gas they want to stop yeah that's that's not how that happened. Yeah. It was, it was, no, we're fine. We can go like a few more hours. And then it was, Kelly was like, I gotta go. I'm just saying, you gotta fucking go to the bathroom. But it wasn't just Kelly. And then every time we stopped for the bathroom, they had to get coffee. But the coffee's just making you have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Stop drinking the fucking coffee. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> they are legit addicted yeah. to coffee. Sorry. Yeah. That's... Like, fucking scary addicted to coffee. We'll, we'll they'll get one. We'll go finish it. Go on a ride. Get off the ride. Oh, I gotta get more coffee. Yeah. So like, the How idea. Is kind of fucking Joffrey's. The idea is, I'm I'm leading. They're following. Whatever. So we Justin's get... preference. I, That's I'm, what I like to call that. I like to call that Justin's it's preference. It's not. It's not really. But my dad prefers it because he wasn't the one doing the majority of the driving. Yeah. So, at least on the way down there. It's like, it got to the third time, and, like, they got in front of us for one of the stops, and we had to follow them, and we ended up losing, like, five to ten minutes just trying to find the gas station they were looking for 
we ended up in a parking lot and doing like legit donuts in it like and i see mike and my dad inside and i'm like stop letting him fucking drive like i can't oh, it was the four of them in one car yes and then okay. it was me ashley and the kids in ours so we get back on the highway we go we eventually get to florida and well, there's some stuff in between there like before like moments on the trip that i wrote down that were interesting okay like as we were getting into the baltimore harbor tunnel like 30 seconds in a guy got a flat in the tunnel oh yeah that's right and he was hauling and, a, he was hauling a fucking boat yeah. oh guy hauling a trailer and we just happened to catch you where you know sometimes when these things happen people are starting to get over out of the lane where the person is has the flat and it starts the bottleneck we just missed just that missed we it. got through and you could tell there's gonna be hell behind us because it's yeah we were like 20 seconds into a three minute tunnel ride yeah yeah so we dodged, we dodged a big bullet uh, and there's a really sweet wipeout style uh attraction down there where you can get pulled on a ski by a cable around a lake and do all those stunt fucking things where you get beat to shit by uh inflatable stuff over water i didn't know they had those down there let me see that. yeah so we get down we get down there well we're into florida and uh at one point someone got in between our cars as keith is driving Yes. And he got all hot and bothered. Instead of just like being annoyed at the person and like, all right, how do I get around them and get back behind the people I'm supposed to be following? Yeah. He hops to the right, blows past them, yeah. blows past you, blows past a fucking 18 wheeler hauling a full fucking uh, load, blows past like three other cars and we're like, what are you doing? You're losing them. Yeah. Why? Why? I had to get around the guy. No, you didn't. You got pissed. And you wanted to fly by them for no reason to show them something. I don't know. Now this is this is where this is where shit that night starts to fall apart. It was at, Florida. Yes, yeah. it was at this very moment that Keith blows by the exit we need to take to go to dinner. Mm. We were stopping at the Cracker Barrel right off of I four in Orlando. Right. Oh, so you were not just into Florida. Yeah, you were. We were, you were two we were, hours we were, into Florida. Yeah, yeah, we were there. We were there. We were going to stop at Cracker Barrel, get dinner, and then go to our hotel for the night. Right. Okay. So, so Keith pulls this. We lose him completely. And does he not have a GPS? He does. He does. Oh, okay. Go on our phones. He's got. He actually yeah. has CarPlay, so it's a lot easier than any other yeah. time of driving. Right. Because anyone that plugs in, it goes right up on the screen. Right on One the screen. of the best driving experiences I've had as far as directions goes. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, I guess we're not fucking stopping for dinner there. So then Kelly starts texting, and she's like, "Where'd you go?" And I was like, "Where the fuck did you go? Don't give me the where did I go? I know where I am." <laughs> And she's like, aren't we stopping for dinner? I was like, yeah, we just, your husband just passed the fucking exit. So we had to find another one, 20 miles away from where we are. So she's like, go to this one. Yes, this one. Okay, great. We'll meet you there. All right, fine. So we get off, we get off the highway, get onto another highway, off of the highway. We, we turn into the Cracker Barrel parking lot. We're driving through the parking lot, and it's not very busy. And Ashley and I are looking at each other, and I'm like, where the fuck's their car? Because Kelly's like, we're already at the restaurant, and this was like five minutes before we pulled up. I was like, all right, we're right off the exit. We'll be right there. So I call Cal. I said, Cal, where you at? Oh, we're inside. The Cracker Barrel? Yeah. The Cracker Barrel in front of the Target? No. Hmm. Okay. I'm not coming to where you are. Let's just have separate dinners. See you at the hotel. We had already gotten a table for eight. 
on one of those big round tables. And like right as you walk into with the second table coming out of the, the shopping, the, the uh, gift center. And half of us are sitting there and there's a half empty table <laughs> and nobody fills in. I, uh, because at this point I was, I was pissed. No, that was a good call on your part because you would have ruined everybody's dinner. I, I wasn't the cause. It just doesn't matter. You were the one who was going to ruin the dinner for everybody, so it's a good thing you didn't go. Hang on to that notion. So, <laughs> okay, it's always in there. So we're like, whatever. So we 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 have our dinner. Ashley, myself, Zach, and James, and you know we're just like, Ashley's just like I. What is his deal? I was like, I don't know, but this shit needs to stop now. So, I'm like, we eat. We're everybody's feeling better. Of course, you eat after a long road trip. You, you know, you walk around the store. As we're leaving and headed to our hotel for the night, I get a text from them, and they're like, "We just left." I'm like, "Okay, cool. We'll meet you at the hotel." We were closer. Uh, so we get to the hotel, we're like, okay, this is how you get in. We go to get into the self-parking, and there's no parking attendant, and the fucking up-and-down thingy is broken. So there's, like, a line of cars behind us, and we have to get out and tell people, to, like, to move, that we can't park there, yada, yada, yada. So we go back to the front of the hotel, and, and we pull up into the valet, and we're like, look, we want to do self-parking, but, like, there's no one there and the fucking thing's broken. They're like, oh, we'll send someone down to fix it, no problem. Just, like, if you need to check in, go check in, and then you can move the car. We're like, okay, fine. So we check into the Swan and Dolphin. We're at the Swan. I love the Swan. It's gorgeous. So nice. Gorgeous lobby. Nice. Yeah, dirty carpets. Yeah. Mike had a hang-up about the carpets. Oh. Rooms are nice, though. They're big. Uh, the rooms are big, but the beds are small. Really? You know what's a small bed? The... the 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 beds are only falls. They're not even. We have a king. Well, Joe, we have four people. We can't. Well, yeah, we can't do a fucking yeah, king bed. Yeah, yeah, I know. I love have them. they renovated those in the last couple of years? Uh, I, it looked it looked newer. It's very nice though. Because yeah. we stayed at the Swan once Swan. when I was younger, and uh, she rolled her eyes. I thought yeah, it was I, nice. I, I remember my mom having a similar comment about the carpets. Nice on the, the main drag carpets like weren't that clean. The lobby, and they was, had the us, lobby was on nice. We like must have room. walked a quarter mile to get to the room. Yeah. We had great views, though. I'll throw some yeah. of the pictures up in the... Okay. The so we're, we we're like... Okay. So Ooh. I use my... I use my fucking travel agent credentials to get us the room because I got it at a really fucking low rate, right? Like, almost $140 off per room for the night. We check in, and they're like, okay, Justin, here you go, blah, blah, blah. Oh, uh, Ken, we, uh, you got a free upgrade on your room. You got the fireworks view. Yeah. And I'm like, mm-hmm. motherfucker. My dad's laughing. I was like, I booked this fucking room. He's like, yeah, but, you know, I put it on my card. I was like, you just got the money for it. <laughs> Whatever. Now you're going to bed. Was that the place where there was a thirty-six dollar charge okay. for self parking? So this was incredible. So Swan and Dolphin charges you thirty-six dollars for self parking. They charge you forty-two dollars for valet. Okay. So for six bucks more, you get fucking valet. Yeah. Yeah. So we paid the six dollars more to get the fucking valet. Yeah. Because the parking lot was like half a mile from the fucking entrance to the hotel. Right. It's the condescending way they put it on the sign, though. There's an exit privilege. Yes. You're paying $36 exit for the privilege. privilege to leave. The fucking word privilege is on the sign. Yes. Go fuck yourself. So, whatever. We're like, okay, cool. We go up to your our room. You guys mm-hmm. go up to your room. Um, and we'll, you know, we'll come back and meet in the lobby because we wanted to go walk on the boardwalk. I needed to get Zach moving. He did incredible. He was great the entire ride. He ate dinner at Cracker Barrel, no problem. Like, he was incredible. We get him out to the boardwalk. We're walking around. And at this point, my dad and I are checking in. No one else is around us. And he goes, look, I know today was rough, but, like, 
tomorrow's another day, we're going to start off fresh. And I was like, look, as far as I'm concerned, right now is another day. This lobby is beautiful. <laughs> you know, I want to go walk around. We're going to have a good night. It's comfortably warm outside, not like overbearing. It's like, this could be a really good night. He's like, oh, okay. Not expecting that from me. Like I said, I was trying my fucking best. So we go, we walk around the boardwalk, uh, you know, we're taking pictures, we're chatting, watching some of the street performers, want to uh, hit the, the shop, we get some ice cream, everybody's feeling good. We, uh, we catch fireworks, you know, we're, we're heading back to the hotel, we're like, alright, everybody's gonna go knock the fuck out, we'll get up in the morning. We were gonna do Typhoon Lagoon, but... I think everybody was just, we were just tired and we wanted to kind of like chill. Um, Kelly, Keith, and my dad were definitely not going. Mike, myself, the kids, and Ash were like, all right, we're still going to go. So we get up the next morning, load up the car, we head over to Animal Kingdom Lodge because that was our hotel for the, the whole time we were there. And we check in. Zach is, like, not eating anything. And, like, time's cutting it close because we had, like, we had stif- stuff to do in the afternoon. None of the rooms were ready yet. And we're like, okay, well, we don't, you know, we'll just, we'll do Typhoon another time. Well, let's just chill here by the pool and then we'll go get lunch at Disney Springs and then whatever. So, <clears throat> we go get... Uh, lunch we all like go separate ways for lunch and then we hit a couple shops real quick and then we were going to go back to the hotel the rooms were all ready and we had chef mickey's for dinner so we head out to dinner and by the time mike and dad had gotten their room it was pretty late in the day and we were all like, shit, dinner's at 5.30. If we try to take a bus to Magic Kingdom and then either walk over or hop the monorail over, like, we're not going to make it. We need to take we need to take an Uber. So we take an Uber. They get one for them. Uh, do you want to talk about your experience in the Uber? I, I think this is the one. This is the one. Is the next day? No, this, this is, is the, the one. That's the day. This is the day where the least talkative uber driver i've ever seen in my life like i'm a rambling mess compared to this woman on a day-to-day basis i'm very quiet most of the time this is the time where this lady completely blows a stop sign like in animal from one lodge (laughs) to the other like between kadani and jumbo there's like two stops she comes up to the first one pretty hot but stops. So I'm like, oh, well, okay, she lives on the edge. I can live with that. She's trying to get us from point A to point B with some speed. Cool. Whoa, she's trying to get us there really speedy. Didn't even look at that. Didn't even depress. Didn't even put her foot near the brake. So that one was pretty scary. Yeah. So they get there a couple minutes before us. We pull up maybe like four or five minutes behind them. And I'm thinking, oh, they're going to be waiting in the lobby. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> Come on. What is it, the 10th floor? Yeah. All, they're all the way up at Chef Mickey's already. I'm like, why? Yeah, the, of so I, I call my sister. I'm like, where the fuck are you? She's like, we're right out front of the restaurant. I was like, why didn't you wait? So, okay. Fine. Whatever. So we go up there. We're <laughs> seated. That happens to me every time I go. Yeah. We get up there. We're seated. And I'm like, I walk by them. I was like, hey, thanks for waiting. She's like, and Keith's like, well, and Leslie, yeah, I know. I, I, I shouldn't expect it from you. Then I go, hey, have fun trying to sit down for dinner because I changed the reservation to four people. So we sit, <laughs> we're having dinner, and we have, like, the slowest waitress on Disney property. She was unfortunate. Yeah. It's a buffet. So, like, I feel like a buffet shouldn't even have drink service, except for uh-huh. the fact that they have alcohol there, so I guess it's all part and parcel. You get your drinks no matter what, right. from this same 80-year-old woman. You know, you get there, you sit down, you give her drinks, and she's yeah. like, all right, cool, go get your plates and go fill up. Right. Oh, great. Walk up, 
fill up a plate, come back to the table, expecting our drinks to be there. Nope. Oh, they're not here yet. Darn. Well, the water should come soon. <laughs> nope. Halfway through my plate, and we're all looking at each other like, anyone's else's mouth really dry? Yeah. Anyone else really need a drink right now? And her supporter, her support staff guy, comes by and is like, everything okay? And this is my first rude moment of the trip. I had a handful of rude moments. I was like, uh, no, we didn't get our drinks yet. Oh, 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 so, so, sorry. Yeah. So we finally get the drinks, right? And after dinner, we're waiting for her to come back with our our slips for our dining plan to sign. And we're like, oh, we could do the... They're like, Tate, you can get the photo pass photo over the way. And we're like, okay. You know, the character interactions were great. Zach had a good time with those. Everybody had... Everybody was fine. It takes her about another 15 to 20 fucking minutes to get us the, the receipts to sign. Yeah, this lady should be standing like she be she should be at a cash register somewhere. Yeah, or standing there just with a greeter. Sign, waving just at a greeter. People. She should just she be, should a greeter. be a greeter. Very nice, very lovely woman yes. who can't get out of her own way. Unfortunately, no. needs to make a, a change in life. Yeah. So, from there, we t- we take the picture. The picture's good, and we decide we're gonna we're meeting up with Tracy and her family over at uh, Polly. So we head towards the monorail. Go up to the monorail. I get separated from the group because they want to check my bag and I have the stroller. Zach was not in the stroller at this time, but the stroller still had to be checked. So whatever. So, like, they, like, give me almost a full cavity search. Like, it was a lengthy checking of me. And the guy was nice and we were chatting. And, like, these guys... contact. These guys, before... I'm even like, they run the wand over me. They're all in the elevator, up the elevator. Again, I get left behind. So I get up there, and I see a fucking monorail pulling away. And I go, I swear to Christ, if they're on that monorail, I'm going to lose my fucking shit. They weren't. So we get on the monorail, we go over to Polly, meet up with Tracy, uh, Ash grabs a Lapu Lapu, at Tama Lounge, we head down to Trader Sam's uh, Tiki Terrace, get some drinks, chat and music. Zach's being Zach, but I got him a Mickey Premium Bar. He's he's happy for a while. The music's starting. We're having a good time. Uh, because there's so many of us at that point, they had to seat us at three separate tables. So, like, people were, like, jumping around and mixing conversation. It was a nice time. But, like, Zach was starting to get antsy, so... We're like, hey, we're going to dip out. He's starting to get tired. You know. So we went for a walk around the poly. We we saw the spot where if we were to plant ashes of my mother, it would have been around that area. Mm-hmm. Walked around the bungalows, and then we we went back to the room. <clears throat> they hung out a bit later. But I think you guys were back probably a little bit after us. And I think that's the night we saw the drone show for the first time? No. This was no? just the poly night. Okay. You guys left a little before. bit after us. Did you watch the water pageant? What the hell's the water pageant? No, we left a little bit before uh, that. That's we my see, favorite thing. Yeah, we see it all the time. So the next day was our first park day. We rope drop Animal Kingdom. We do the run to... Uh, flight of passage. Uh, my dad doesn't want to go, so he's going to sit with Zach, which was cool because I finally got to ride with everybody. Usually we have to ride or swap. So we get on there, we get down, we do the, the boat ride, you know, we're talking about the things. Tell your story. I will not, Finny. Um, and, and, you know, it's turning into a pretty decent day. We we do quick serve lunch. Everybody separates for that, and then we're like, okay, we're gonna head back to the to the room, hit the take a nap, hit the pool, and then we have you know we had Boma for dinner that night. Actually, the, one of the funniest things that happened leading into Animal Kingdom, you know, we all have to go through security, 
and every one of us is carrying backpacks except for Keith. He has his sunglasses and his wallet with him, and he's the one person that gets randomly pulled aside to get checked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is standing in a line of like 10 people that's not moving Whoa. before one of the security guys just looks at him, looks him up and down, and it's like, yeah, yeah, you can go. Yeah. Huh. We're all standing there just like, really? Out of all of us. Him? <laughs> So, you know, we hit the pool, we go to Boma, we have a nice meal at Boma. It wasn't as good as the last time we were there. Some of the meats were a little, not like terribly tough, but they weren't as fall off the bone as previously. But I stated to everyone, I'm going to get my money's worth of Boma. Four plates. Okay, I was going to say, did you? you got so my I had money's worth. two salad plates, a meat plate, uh -huh. and a sides uh -huh. plate, and, uh -huh. and dessert. Mm -hmm. uh, had zebra a domes? Fuck zebra domes. They're overrated. Oh, it's so good. Uh, Joe, if you want to come on our show this weekend, we will get in depth about certain things. We ate, we we tasted both the Summer House and Gideon's Cookies, and mm -hmm. we will be reviewing those on Can't Stop the Rope Drop. Um, okay. So after that, we were going to meet up with Tracy over at Saratoga Springs, where she was staying. And catch the drone show. Uh, Zach was starting to get a little wild. And, like, honestly, Ash and I were pretty fucking exhausted from the drive still. And the fact that we had gotten up so goddamn early that morning. So we're like, you know what? We're going to bow out. Ashley had hurt her ankle. Oh. She had twisted it. And that was the night it was the size of, like, a fucking baseball. So I'm like, we're going to get her Motrin, we're going to ice her foot, we're going to take the kids back, we're just going to play. So we stopped at the uh, at Jumbo House, the uh, gift shop there. Zach wanted these cars, we got them those. James and I got the Castle Gummies. Ooh! They are delicious, by the way. Zach's first gummy, he ate them with us. She iced her foot, we had a good night, we went to bed early. That's right. Next day was Hollywood Studios. Rope Drop Hollywood Studios, and we had Lightning Lane set up for later in the day. Uh -huh. Right? So we got, a, we got a good amount of stuff accomplished in the morning. Uh, we did... They rope, yeah, smuggler's done right away. Well, no, this was the first time. So they rope, uh, rope Drop Slinky. Oh, yeah, that's right, Slinky. Then we uh -huh. did Mania, went over to Batu. Uh -huh. um, we didn't get on anything there. We grabbed a quick breakfast... Went to the shops. Yeah, that was pre-shopping day, planning for what we might yeah. be. And I was really surprised to find the thing, because I'd been, like, hemming and hawing leading into this, what's my big purchase going to be. I had heard nothing about that lightsaber stand. I didn't know anything Wait, really? about it either. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't, like, I never showed you when I got it. No. no. Really? Yeah. So it's like one of the first things I see when I'm in there. I'm like, yeah, yeah. this is it. Oh, only 50 bucks. Oh, you can club mm -hmm. someone to death with it? Oh, yeah, beautiful. It's fucking heavy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the little attachments for the front that you can put. But I didn't realize until I set mine up. I thought the little slats on the front might be for mounting. No. You can put like six of those Kyber crystal holders along the mm -hmm. front edge. That's nice. Mm -hmm. And they'll all sides. Yeah. 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 So we do that. We hit Muppet Vision. Uh, after that, we did. Star Tours, which we got Hoth, and then we mm -hmm. got Ahsoka. So and, you got a new? And Space Wings. You no. no, no. The, so it's like, Switches between on the them. same ride, you get oh. two different settings. But more importantly, we got the front row. Yeah. Ooh. Never ridden front row on that. Oh. It, is a, it is a fucking game changer. You have all that leg room in front of you. All of us were just like fucking man spread out. Legs dangling in front. Like, it was incredible. Uh, we did the Mickey Shorts Theater. And then we got the Little Mermaid Shake. Ash was trying to get some footage. And then we were like, okay, we're going to probably head back home, grab a quick surf for lunch, and then, like, nap and pool. And then we got to come back later. We're going to Ale and Compass for dinner. Uh, at Ooh. some point during this day, 
Kelly's Magic Band fell in the toilet. Oh, Jesus. Yes, yes, it did. I don't know the details of that, but I was told to write that down. Yes. <laughs> and then we were meeting up with Tracy and everybody at Oga's that night. So uh, we were... The best, beside the food being great at Allen Compass, the best moment was when uh, Uncle Ken was trying to order his beer, but mumbled his way through it. And she said, as she's she taking drinks, she she thought he wanted cornflakes to drink. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, corn, 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 corn flakes? cornflakes? Coors Light. Oh, okay. Coors Light. Okay. But had he already been drinking? Yeah, of course. Yeah. But he wasn't like slur his words. He was just like, he like mumbled it. But oh, like, she was, she was also possibly the best. We had a run of really good waiters this entire trip. But she was okay. awesome. Like I left really the, nice waiters. Some yeah. of them sucked at their job. Some of them did. I left. Yeah, I left a nice cast compliment, cast member compliment for her on the app. She was really great. Um, so, Alien Compass, so fucking good. Mm-hmm. Like dinner. That? That's at the yacht yeah. club. Like it is delicious. Now. Was it after we were done there, we went back to the, the hotel and went to the arcade? No. Uh, I think it was that afternoon. Okay. So we could jump back for a second. So that afternoon, yeah, it was that afternoon. Because I was like, I'm going to do laundry while Zach takes a nap. So I say to Mike, hey, do you want to run down with me and James to go do laundry? We're probably going to jump in the arcade. So like, yeah. So we throw... Load in the wash. We go to the arcade. It's pretty good. Pretty good setup, right? Yeah. A couple plenty of fun to be had yeah. in there. But and we like, did. They have the card system where you put money on one of their cards and you swipey swipe. Uh, yeah. And like uh, James and Mike were playing air hockey and Mike was kicking his ass. Fucking swarmed on him. I was playing <laughs> Avengers pinball and Pac Man. Like we were having a good time. And then I was like, oh, we got to change over the laundry and then I got to get back to the room. So Mike goes over to the bowling machine. Well, no, I'm standing near it while you guys are playing, and someone's leaving, and they kind of tap me on the shoulder like, hey, uh, someone put a bunch of money on this one machine, and we're leaving. So we figure we just tell the next person here so we get some use out of it. Like, oh, okay, cool. I walk over to it. There's $6,000 worth of credit on this machine. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Who fucked up? <laughs> we are, we were trying to figure out the entire trip how that happened. Yeah. Because every day we would go back there at some point and the money kept going up. Yeah. Like, I don't think people were paying attention and they just kept swiping their card. <laughs> but, like, that's still a ridiculous amount of money. It ended yeah. with $6,152 off. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Okay. So we, dinner at Allen Compass. We finish dinner, we're like, cool, we're just going to take the boat from the yacht over to Hollywood Studios. This is the quickest way. Uh-huh. Okay. So we're there, we're waiting a few minutes, and we see a boat come and, like, passes by us, and we're like, huh, that's interesting, and we see the Epcot boat come twice. And we're like, this is really weird. So, like, we ask, at this point, Kelly yells to the skipper on the... Epcot boat, and she's like, hey, where's the Hollywood Studios boat? And he's like, oh, it's across the lake over there. It broke down. <sighs> now, I want you to know that at this point, after dinner, we had a lightning lane for uh, Tower of Terror, and we had a lightning lane for Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway, and we were uh-huh. going to go from there to meet everybody at Oga's at 8.50. That was our Oga's reservation. Our boat doesn't get to us until about quarter after eight. (laughs) So we have to go to the Swan and Dolphin to Uh unload and pick up. And then we get Uh to Hollywood Studios. It is now like 835. We have Uh to go through security again. And we have to run to Galaxy's Edge. At this point, we call Tracy. Tracy's like, they're cool. Don't worry about it. We got there a few minutes late. So we get in. They pushed it to nine. They're like, yeah, they pushed it to nine. So we get there a few minutes before nine. We get in. We're all right at the bar. Zach is wheeled up with the lower bar. So, like, Zach was, like, right wheeled up there. He's 
dancing to the music. He was having. He was really good. Four of us are wearing our Ogus T-shirts. Yes. So the bartenders take notice at this point instantly. Yeah. Like I walk in belly up and I'm like peacocking my chest. Yeah. Like the shirt as tight as I can, and I see one of the wait- the ladies working there turns to another one. She's like, I I haven't seen that shirt before. Is that new? So they thought and it was, instantly walks over yeah. to me. So they thought it was one of theirs. And they're like, no, 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 he made it. And like, you know, so we're talking, she's like, that's really cool. Give us your info before we leave. So like, we're riding high at this point. Uh, we have a couple of cocktails, apparently $500 worth. That is, uh, quite a bit. Well, Pretty my dad, doing there when there's like my dad, 10 people. yeah, plus, True. plus my sister and her husband, um, Decided that like everything they got, they were going to get the collectible cups for. Oh, then my dad was footing the bill on this, so like that's the reason oh. that we were like, no, no, we don't need the collectible cups. We just want the drinks. Yeah. So we have a good time. Hunter's really drunk. Tom is there. Kyle. So it's Tom and Amy, his wife, and Tracy and all them. So Tom was actually wearing a Cheers shirt. Hang on. So it was planned all of them to go. Yes. Because they probably haven't gone together in 15 years. Yes, a long time. But, like, yeah. Tom and Amy had reached out to Tracy uh, and was like, would it be cool if we tagged along? And Tracy's like, sure. And Tracy called me. She's like, is it cool? And I was like, why the fuck do we care? So you you weren't doing parks with them. You were just doing meals with them? We had done... So we had done a little bit of Animal Kingdom with them. They, they, we did Everest and stuff. Okay. And then kind of split after that. We did Kali River Rapids, but we got, like, separated at the Rapids. And then we did Hollywood with them, kind of-ish. But not really, because, again, they had their plans. We had our plans. We had lightning lanes. Yeah. You know. Um, so we miss our lightning lanes. We have the, the... We get out and we take some awesome pictures in a very empty Galaxy's Edge and, and Hollywood Studios. We get we nice. got a, we catch our bus. Like we had James run to get it because it was it's gonna leave because the last bus leaves at ten thirty. Because there was only one showing of Phantasmic at nine that night. Oh. It's like ten twenty five. Oh my and god. And we're just walking out of the front and as we're running to the buses, we see our bus and we're like, James go. <laughs> So he runs, we get on, we get back, and the next day, we uh, we had Whispering Canyon for breakfast, and then we were just going to chill. So we do no, Whispering Canyon. That's a no park day? No park day. That's a, that's a hell of a way to start a no park day. So we do Whispering Canyon for breakfast, 9, 9 a.m. Yeah. Uh, we then break up as a group. My dad... Heads back to the hotel. Kelly and Keith go to Disney Springs again to buy more stuff. Uh, and it's important to note that they they bought a lot of shit. They did not stop buying stuff. Yeah. And so Mike stayed with us and we were like, hey, we're going to get some footage here. And then we're going to go over to like um, uh, Grand Floridian stop in their gift shop because they got a remodel and then, you know, maybe take some footage. So we do that. Mike's with us. We're hanging. We're having a good time. Uh, we head back to the hotel. We hit the pool again, nap again. We hit Disney Springs that night. And we have dinner dinner at the Edison. Uh, I have on here, Kelly gets schooled at Gideon's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that happens after dinner. Okay. <laughs> So we have dinner at the Edison. Uh, Nice waitress. Beforehand, we stop at guest relations because I was like, I'm going to see if they can do anything for us for the the boat breaking down and missing the lightning lanes because, like, I paid for that. My dad's like, I paid for it. I was like, no, actually, a-hole. I paid for everybody for Hollywood Studios because it automatically went to my my card. He's like, oh. So... Um... I go, and I'm there for a while, and I'm like, guys, just go ahead to dinner. Just, you know, save me a spot. I'll get there when I can, because the cast member was, like, had to verify all this stuff. So it turns out 
they comp us a lightning lane for the next time we go back uh, on Thursday. They give us, you know, the whatever the fuck they call it now for the day. And, like, we scheduled the stuff we didn't get accomplished. So we got a Mickey Minis, we got a Smuggler's Run, and we got Tower Terror. <clears throat> so I run from there to the Edison. And, of course, we're seated downstairs. So I'm like, fuck that, I'm taking the elevator. At this point, I think I was dehydrated because my calves felt like they were going to explode. So we sit, we're having, we have a nice dinner. Dinner was really good. The drinks were really good at the Edison. It might have been the best steak I've ever had. Mike, it was one of the top five steaks Mike I've ever said eaten. this. And, did I, oh yeah, I did have a piece of it. It was fucking melty. Like, it was... Yeah. What kind of steak? So, the New York Strip, I believe? Okay. Because at the Ale and Compass just the day before, I believe, mm-hmm. uh, I had had a New York Strip. It was good. They had like a garlic butter butter topping. I was like, it was nice. This is very good. I can't complain about this. Yeah. And the next day it was like, eh, I don't know if I want to have the same thing. You know what? Let me just compare and contrast. Light years ahead. So much really? better. Yeah. Without that kind of uh, garlic butter topping. Now, just incredible. Kelly and James got a fucking sourdough cheesesteak grilled cheese. It was massive and <laughs> incredible. Four types of cheese. Melty steak. It was delicious. Ash and I got roasted chicken. My dad got uh, ribs that just, like, he just pulled all the bones out. Nice. Nice. We got dessert. Of course, dining plan. It comes with it. Fucking Uh, terrible dessert. Really? Fucking horrendous. All around. None of us enjoyed them. The only one that liked their dessert was James. He had got a Dolce de Leche cheesecake. Keith and I got the apple crisp that came with flaky pie crust. And it was more like a hard fucking cookie was on top of it. And it was was just horrendous. Mike and Kelly got sorbets. They tasted weird. Yeah, they tasted chemically. And they're supposed to be house-made sorbets. And they they tasted... Like, one of those Luigi's in a cup tasted better than this. Yeah. And then Ashley and my dad got the southern banana pudding and... It was it was okay. Mine's better. Um, but the bananas inside were, like, brown. Yeah. Yeah, it was gross. Yeah, I don't understand how there could be such a disparity between the two. And there was another one of my semi-rude moments. This is incredible. After the group had walked away, and uh, our server comes down. And she asks me very specifically, so how was dessert? Now, if she had asked me how the meal was, I probably would have just raved about the steak. But she specifically said, how's the dessert? And I said, you know what? It wasn't that good. I don't think any of us liked it. <laughs> like, I, by the look on her face, like, I don't think anyone's ever been that blunt. But the, the meal was incredible. Did you say that? Yeah. Yeah. I quickly followed up with, like, it was one of the best eggs I've ever had. But, yeah, the dessert wasn't good. Well, you know, we, we like to tell the chefs, you know, we like to make sure the, the kitchen knows. It's not her fault. She didn't so, come here. So we go to Gideon's, and we're in line for Gideon's. It wasn't that long. But, like, okay. we were right by one of the Gideon's workers who was handing out the cards. And, like, Kelly tries to drop, like, knowledge. Like, she knows what she's talking about. And the Gideon's... That's like a normal thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And the Gideon's worker laughs at her and goes, no, that's not right. And then proceeds to take five minutes while we're in line telling Kelly everything she got wrong. <laughs> no way. Yeah. It was fucking great. Wait, so who was she saying it to? She was saying it to James. She was saying something? it to us. And then like the employee was just like, no. <laughs> so we go in, we pay for this overpriced cookie, and the only person that liked it was Zach. Yeah. Um we go from there to the ganachery. I talk Mike into getting the homemade s'mores. The artisanal s'more was exceptional. Yes. Didn't I, mean, I expect it to be good. I didn't expect it to be that good. Uh, tremendous. Yeah. My wife... So, go ahead. I was going to ask if it was your first time at Gideon's. Yes, it was my first time at Gideon's. Okay. 
All right, I'll follow up with my commentary after you're done telling this part of the story. It will also We've be We've never my, been there. It will also be my last time at Gideon's. Yeah, very overrated, especially so, during that time you have so to wait So fucking for it. overrated. The thing I really loved about the, the s'more, we brought it up while we were there. Back in the day, there used to be these s'mores things you could microwave in the plastic packages, and it was trash. It was obviously trash, but there was something good about it because, like, the graham cracker was soft. All of it was very chewy. The same effect here, except it was all fresh. I've never had it like that before. Perfectly browned marshmallow. Like, all the the chocolate on the inside was, like, watching them do it. You felt so much more uh, involved in it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we, we walk from there, we go and hit up a few stores, my dad's like, listen, I'm gonna head back to the hotel, my stomach's bothering me, uh, (coughs) right, is this the night, what did I miss, I missed something here. Alright, while you're looking for your spot, uh, the one time I had Gideon's wasn't the last time we went, it was the time before, uh, Jerry and Connie actually met us there. And um, the line was so long at Gideon's, but he was typing it. So the line was so long, we had Emery with us, and she was, like, not about to wait in that line. Mm-hmm. So we uh, decided we are going to go into World of Disney and then take her on, uh, like, I think it was, like, the little train ride or whatever it is that they yeah. have on the opposite side yeah. of Disney Springs. Uh, and so he waited on line at Gideon's for us. I didn't ask him to do it. But he was hyping up the cookies so much. We went and he got us two cookies. Uh, and I mean, like, I liked them more than Emery and Jill did. Yeah. So, like, I basically ate a cookie and a half myself. But, um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I would never wait in a line like that for something for, for food. No. For something that I'm only going to enjoy for a minute and a half. Yeah. Like, I could I understand if it was really, really, really something, like, game-changing, but it wasn't. Even if it was just a cookie I really loved, it's just an incredible version of a chocolate chip cookie that I, every time I come here, I gotta have it, I'll wait an hour and line up. No, it was mediocre. I, uh, Mike paid me a compliment on the first chocolate chip cookie that we tried of the trip at Summer House, and Mike goes, no, yours are better. They're mediocre too. It's like yeah. these these places don't yeah. have to do good work. It seems. Just, right. Well, see, my my problem with cookies at places like that is the same problem that I have with cakes generally. Is the reason why I don't like cakes is because I don't like my food to be either too dry or too dense. Yeah. Generally speaking, with food, I like a crunch, or I like. Um, What's it called like it either it either needs to be crunchy or like soft. I don't like a cake like texture. In most places like that, the cookies are dense and cake like. Yeah. Which is what always bothers me. I mean, when I go to a place like that, I'm usually okay with it being a bit dense as long as it's got good flavor. It's yes. got like good brown sugar flavoring. It didn't. You could barely taste the well, things that yeah. make a good chocolate chip cookie. A chocolate chip cookie. They, the cookies were found wanting. Better. So, Dad leaves. We start rolling around the rest of Disney Springs. We're going in and out of shops, and we're going to catch the drone show. So, we they had watched the drone show two nights before. It was the night that we went back to the room and Ashley iced her ankle. They went over to Saratoga and hung out with everybody. Had a couple drinks, and uh, so we we catch the drone show behind Goofy's Candy Company, which was a good spot for it, actually. There's barely anybody back there. We we got to see it. It was inverted, so, like, you're not seeing the proper image, but you still got the gist of it. The music's piped and whatever. We, we do a few more shops, and then Kelly and Keith wanted to go do something else. They were buying something else, and Mike was with us, and we're just like, all right, we're going to head out then. So we catch, we take a minivan back because at that point I was like, the bus had just left. And I'm like, I'm not waiting for a bus. It's already like 10 o'clock. 
We're rope dropping Magic Kingdom the next morning. I'm like, I just want to get back. So take a minivan back. And I have to do minivans because the lifts don't have car seats. So, of course, I'm paying, like, an arm and a fucking leg. So we get back. We're we're in the hallway, and James is throwing his hat up in the air. And, like, missing it on purpose. And it is cracking Zach up. And Mike gets really good video of it. Did I ever send that to you guys? I don't remember. I I think you no I don't I don't know if you did or not James might have you might have sent it to James. So we rope drop Magic Kingdom. Uh, we get a lot accomplished actually that morning. And then I'm like, there's specific things I want to come back and do for the Halloween party because they have Halloween overlays. Because we had not so scary that night. So I got right, cool. We're gonna go back. We're gonna nap. Maybe the pool. Whatever. We're gonna go back to the Magic Kingdom around 4:30. We have our costumes. And we have Liberty Tree for dinner. So all this is working out. We're fine. We head back. And we do Liberty Tree. Everybody enjoys their meal. I think Mike was pretty pleased with that place, too. Uh, I could have just sat there and ate their pot roast nonstop. You could just shovel that into my mouth. Yeah. And the roast. It was fucking tremendous. So we walk out, and at this point I'm like, alright, cool, the party's going to start soon. We should go back to Adventureland, and we'll start trick-or-treating, and then we'll hit Pirates, because Pirates was supposed to have the pirate overlay. Okay, so we leave, we step out of Liberty Tree Tavern, and there is a popcorn stand to our right, with a line about 30 people long, because it's one of the popcorn buckets for the night. Oh. And... Keith's like, I want the popcorn bucket. I'm like, I'm not fucking waiting in that line. Like, I want this shit too, but like, also, we paid a hundred bucks extra to come do this. Like, I want to get to do things that you can't normally do during the park. And like, uh-huh. as cool as collecting popcorn buckets are, and I have quite a few, like, this is not a thing. So, he goes and gets in line. I'm like, I'm not waiting for him. And Kelly's like, why can't we just wait a minute? I was like, Kel, the party starts in five minutes. Like, I want to do the party things. She's like, well, fine, we'll meet with you. I was like, fine. So we go back, we head towards the beginning of Adventureland, and we start trick-or-treating. And, like, at this point, I think Mike is feeling it now. He's like, oh, okay, this is pretty cool. So, like, we get two trick-or-treat zones in, and then we're like, all right, let's go to the bathroom and wait for them. They finally meet up with us. They come with four popcorn buckets. They give my dad one, James gets one, and they both have one. Why they both need one, I don't know. They live in the same fucking house. Four. Four. Popcorn buckets aren't cheap. No, they're not, Joe. So, we start doing, you know, we hop on pirates, we do some more trick-or-treating, we're heading towards Tiana's, and we find a spot for the first parade. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Michael. And we're like, okay, cool, we're going to watch the parade. Parade comes by. Love the boo to you, parade. Zach was super excited. And he, we had him right there. He was, like, right in front. Yeah, I was behind, so I didn't have any clue if he was digging it. Because there was a lot of things about the trip he was not enjoying. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't having a good time with some of the rides. Uh, Love the parade. He's dancing. The characters were coming up to him. Like, he was popping bubbles. Like, he had a good time. So, from there, we're like, okay, we gotta, we gotta, like, go towards Adventureland. We're not, they, they, we, we rode Haunted Mansion during the day, which was fine. We're not getting on Tiana's. It's a standby line of like 45 minutes. We could get so much more accomplished. Whatever. We had already done Thunder Mountain for the day. No biggie. So we're heading towards Adventureland. Traffic is crazy. We're trying to get in there. And of course, Kelly and Keith are like, we got to go to the bathroom again. Fine. Go to the bathroom. We meet up. I'm like, okay. Like, and Keith's like, well, what's next? I'm like, dude, now every day I state multiple times throughout the day we don't have to stay together if you want to go do something please go do it 
because like Zach at times was being a three year old. He was like getting cranky and like, you know, I'm not trying to put a stopper to anybody else's day. Mike can back me up here daily. I said, go do what you need to do. So at this point, we head over to Pooh because we didn't get on it during the day and the line wasn't that long. So we get on there and, like, it's hot. It was hot that night. And I'm aggravated. And Keith's being a pain and Ashley's, like, being Ashley about things. And I'm like, go do what you want to do. I will take the kids and I will do what I want to do. Like, you all can go do whatever it is you feel you need to do. I'm like, but, like, why can't... At this point, I was like, I can't fucking please everybody. Like, I am trying, but everybody wants to do different things. And, like, I can't do everything everybody wants. So, we get off Winnie the Pooh, and I'm like... I looked at Keith, Kelly, and Mike, and my dad, and I said, go ride... Go ride Space Mountain. I'm going to take James and Zach. Zach needs to get changed. You guys go ride Space Mountain. Kelly, you go wait by Space Mountain. So we... It's like... Kelly, go look at Space Mountain. <laughs> yeah. Like, go go do that. Okay, fine. And Has she ridden it before or never? Well, Kelly's ridden Space Mountain before, but, like, it was a one and done for her. And, like, I wanted to ride it, but I didn't need to ride it, right? And at this point, I was just like, go do something. Like, everybody, leave me the fuck alone for a couple minutes and go do something. So, I take James and Zach. We go uh, change Zach. And then James and I get two snacks. We grab... James wants the candy corn soft serve. They fuck up his order. They end up making him the sundae instead of just the soft serve. So he, uh, right, because the Sunday wasn't a snack credit, only the soft serve was. So he goes to use the snack credit. They he pays for it with the snack credit and pulls up, and they're like, "Hand on the Sunday." He's like, "Oh, is this the soft serve?" She's like, "That's fine. Here you go." So he had that, and then I got the Queen of Hearts slush, which was just a cherry slush with like pureed cherry in it and whipped cream. It was fine. Okay. It was fine. Okay. We get on People Mover. They were much more relaxed by this point. Yeah. I was chill. I calmed myself down. Yeah. People on, Mover does that. Yeah, we get on People Mover. Zach's not super thrilled about it. And then, like, Zach was just... It, at this point, it was, like, 10.30, 10.45. And he's tired. It's hot. I get it. So I'm like, guys, go do whatever. Like, I'm going... We're going to go make our way back to Main Street. We're going to stop... And get Ashley the pumpkin cheesecake. We're going to stop in the store. And then we're going to head the fuck out. Like, now mind you, I didn't get to do any of the shit that I had set out to do at the Halloween party. I wanted to watch the Sanderson Sisters stage show. And I wanted to see the Jack Skellington fireworks thing. Did yeah. you see the Headless Horseman? Yeah, well, yeah, we watched the parade. Okay. So, like, I didn't do any of that. And then Ash is like, I wanted to get on Tron. And I was like, right, but, like, why didn't you just go fucking ride Tron? Because, like, I told you, go do what you want to do. Like, not in a shitty way, but, like, Zach was... Everybody's hot. So we, we end the night. My dad comes with us. Mike stays behind with Kelly and Keith. They ride Tron. They do a little bit more trick-or-treating. Uh, the next morning, we slept in. Sleep in time, and we were going to go to Epcot at like 11, 11.30. Grab something to eat, and then we had a bunch of... I had stacked a bunch of lightning lanes for later in the day. So we go to Epcot, we take some nice pictures, we get the picture with, with the Walt statue... I love seeing Epcot all open again. I loved everything they did. With the whole Communicore hall area, the, the gardens, like, it's beautiful. 
So we're like, okay, we're going to get on Nemo. Because there looks like there's a storm coming in. All right. Get on Nemo. Walk through the thing. We leave Nemo. We're like, okay. Um, you know, we still have time before our next lightning lane. Figment goes down. So we're like, shit. We had a lightning lane for it. Because I just needed to fill a lightning lane spot. It's no problem. So they give us, you know, they they push the lightning lane time for another time. Like, all right, it's fine. We have, like, an hour before we can check in at Remy. So we're like, okay. We go to the new character spot to see Mickey and Minnie and, and Goofy inside that cool new building that they have. It was fine. We did the pictures. At this point, Keith is like, what's next? What's next? I was like, dude, relax. Like, go do something if you need to do something. You know what time the lightning lane is. Like, this is what we are doing. We're going to go take the pictures. We're going to hit the shops in the countries on the way to France. And then from there, we're going to hit more shops and then have dinner. So we do our thing. We ride Remy's. Zach, eh. And then some woman on... Remy's was like doing her best Ric Flair. She had everybody <laughs> cracking up. She's like she's like wooing during like the, the sharp movements, and then when you're underneath the stove and it kicks on and it's warm, she's like it's hot, like just loud. In retrospect, I'm not sure if she was autistic. I'm really not. I only Could've heard been. bits and pieces. Could have been. We, uh, I had the ham and cheese croissant for lunch that day. From, oh. from uh, Leal, so good, mm-hmm. so good. I love that thing. Yeah, we you know we ride uh, Caballeros. We get to the other shops. James and I get some shit from the caramel shop. We have everybody try the pretzel bread pudding. Everybody loves it. Everybody has a couple cocktails. We're having a good time. We get to La Hacienda. We have a nice dinner. Yes, Joe. Did any of you try the tequila Sunday? I. Uh, I I can't do tequilas. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of tequila. Yeah. Okay. I've, I've seen it. I just have no reviews on it. We have a good dinner. It's pouring rain. We head back to France. We get the glacé. We're heading towards Soren because that was our nighttime lightning lane. We had to rider swap, and then we were going to... Uh, after that, we were watching the fireworks as we were leaving. So... Thursday we were originally going to rope drop Magic Kingdom again to get on anything we didn't get on but everybody was like well I think between rope dropping it the first day and and going to the party we're going to get everything covered we didn't we should have stuck to the plan but it's fine we went back to Hollywood Studios that morning got a bunch of stuff accomplished it was a very rainy day and then we were like alright cool we're going to head back to the hotel once we're done We went over to Riviera real quick to see a spot that my mom liked. Um, Went back, had lunch, watched the rain, took a nice nap. And then we had Homecoming for dinner. Now, Homecoming is my favorite restaurant on property. Love it. Like, it's it's really good. I should say it's it's my favorite non-fancy restaurant. So we get to Homecoming. And at this point, we are we're sitting there, and I think it was twice now, where, like, my dad and I had said to Kelly and Keith, like, you guys are buying a lot of shit. And they continue to buy a lot of shit. So we're sitting there at dinner, and it is, I am sitting in one chair, to my right is Zach, to my left is my dad, to his left is Mike, to his left is Keith, Kelly... James, Ashley, and back to Zachary. Right? We order our food and we're talking. Everybody's having their own little conversations. Food starts coming out. And Keith is telling Kelly that he wants to go get chocolate bars. And James goes to Keith. Why are you going to get more chocolate if we have all that Halloween candy? Like, a fairly innocent question. And Keith goes, this 
from the kid who has no money. And it is this point that Justin loses it. Because he's a fucking child. Huh? Because he's a fucking child. Yeah. So, but also, Keith, Keith's sense of humor is not a normal person's sense of humor. But he didn't say it in a funny way. So I said to Keith, I put my hand on the table and I go, Keith, you've been a pain in my ass this entire fucking trip. But if you ever talk to my child like that again, you and I are going to have a fucking problem. It's now that my body kicks into, like, I'm going to fucking kill him. Like, my heart starts going. I'm getting flushed. I'm, I'm visibly angry. I catch Mike out the corner of my eye, put his silverware down. Because I think he knew what was coming. Yeah, the moment got tense for everybody. The moment got tense for everyone but Ashley. Except Ashley, because she was tending to Zach. She had no idea what the fuck was going on. Yeah. So, like, James is now, like, he looks upset. Kelly's pissed. She's telling Keith to calm down because Keith was about to say something back to me. Yeah, and, like, he gets the word listen out, and she's like, no, don't. Yeah. Stop. She's like, you were wrong. So... I, I, I like, I help Ashley, I cool off Zach's food, I put it in front of Zach, and I grab the bag and I go, I have to fucking go. And I leave. I walk out. And I go to the restrooms across the way from homecoming, and I go into the bathroom, and I go to the bathroom, I breathe, I throw some water on my face. I, like, pace around a little bit. I'm breathing. And I don't know what is happening in the restaurant at this point. Uh, it was just a lot of tension. There wasn't really much being said. I figured, at this point, everyone has their own way of dealing with the situation. I just keep eating my fucking food. I'm just like, you know what? You need sustenance. Just finish <laughs> it. And I'm, like, looking over at yours, and I'm like, I feel bad for him. Like his chicken's getting cold. He yeah. might not come back in. Like, and let's say he gets it to go. You're like, get a box for this. I'm yeah, fucking, I gotta, yeah, yeah. I was like, like oh, he's gonna get in a box. Eat it. it's not I gotta fucking go. That's too bad. Yeah, because I'm high as fuck. Yeah, like, I'm, yeah. I was you're like, you're like, you're like, this food's gonna go to waste. Somebody should really get it. No, no, no. It wasn't it. going to waste. I did say box it. He did. Yeah. But he came back in time. It, it was there was there was just an air of tension. So he came back in time to eat it and to okay. enjoy himself. So that's what happened inside. What happened outside is something completely different. Mm. So, Kelly got up pretty quickly. Kelly got up, I guess, to find me. Yeah. So she texts me. I was still in the bathroom. She's like, "Where are you?" I come out, and she's like, "She's like, look, I'm sorry." And I I looked at her. And I go, "Look, that is the second time now he has talked to my child in that manner, and you are lucky that I did not leap across the table and fucking stab him because that is what I wanted to do." I'm like, I have dealt with this bullshit. Since Wednesday. I'm like, and I, I have to say, I think I've done a really good fucking job at not losing my shit until now. And she's like, no, 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 you have. I was like, there is zero reason for him to talk to, to James like that. Zero. If there was a problem with what James said, then he could address me. We're sitting right across from each other. Or dad. Dad. Or Ashley. Like, the three people that are okay to reprimand him. Mike also has permission to do it. He's around enough. But, like, if you're going to if you're going to go to anybody other than myself, it would be those other two. Right? But also, what he did was not reprimand him. Yeah, what he did was belittle him. Sure. Fair. And, like... I said to her, I go, I'm done with his shit. I'm not going to fucking put up with it. Like, do what you have to do, but, like, understand that I have zero patience left with him now. I go, I'm going to take a deep breath. I'm going to walk back inside. I'm going to help my wife with my crazy-ass three-year-old. I'm going to eat my dinner. Then I'm going to go get ice cream after this. 
and go to the shop I wanted to and go back to the fucking hotel. She's like, it's fine. Now, mercifully, we were pretty deep into the trip. There wasn't a lot of time left around the second, each other. This was, like, yeah, this was day. the second the last day. Yeah. So I, I go back inside. You know, I'm, I'm talking to Ashley. I'm talking to Dad and Mike. And, like, I make zero eye contact with Keith. I, I eat my dinner. It was very good. Even cold, it was good. Mm. And, like, I didn't plan on getting dessert there anyway. And so when he's coming around, plus at that point I didn't want to be around Keith. So I was like, you know, we don't want dessert. And the guy's like, listen, uh, to get the most out of your meal plan, what I recommend to people who don't want dessert is uh, we offer, you know, you can get a couple donuts to go. We own Everglazed. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, we're all like, yeah, fucking donuts for everybody. Donuts for everybody means that each person gets a pack of five donuts per person. Ooh. We alone walked out with 20 fucking glazed donuts. Ooh, incredible, good. incredible donuts, by the way. I, I liken it to, yeah. you remember defending your life? <laughs> when he's in there and the guy asks him if he likes pie, I'm going to give you three pies. I'm going to give you four pies or five pies. So... We get, you know, they leave, right? Now, this, my sister also tells me outside that they had fought almost every day of the trip at the hotel. I said, Dad, listen, I spoke my piece about shit like that before. So, they go, they go back to the hotel. Mike, my dad, the kids, Ashley and I, we go salt and straw get some ice cream, hit up a store or two, we leave, and then we get back to the hotel, and it is like a fucking monsoon. Right? Because, no, no, no. Oh, that's, that's right. Yeah, it was, that was, it was that night, right? That was the rainy night? We cashed in the snacks? No, it was the night after, I guess. Anyway, so we go back to the hotel. We're just like, all right, whatever. On the way back up, my sister's in the little lounge area. No Keith, just Kelly. That, that was a slightly awkward moment. Because as your dad and I are walking in, he goes, all right, Kelly wants to talk to me for a second. I'm going to meet her downstairs. All right. I go walking in, see her there, and like kind of meet up with you guys around the same time. Yeah. And see her sitting there. So I'm just like avoiding... Looking. I'm like, nope, just keep walking. This has nothing to do with you. Keep walking. And everyone else just kind of walks what? into the little lounge area. I'm like, ah, oh, you know what? Fuck it. I can open the room door. <laughs> so Mike Mike leaves. Yeah. So, like, we're in there, and my dad goes, are you okay? She's like, yeah, we talked, you know, whatever. Okay. And I, I'm like, I think... Kelly's Kelly goes to James, she's like, I love you. And she looks at me and goes, I love you too, but like you know, the situation could have been avoided. And like inside of me, I wanted to rip her face off. But like I didn't. Yeah, it could have been avoided from a fucking adult. Yeah. So like yeah. I, I didn't even I didn't even start to get into it at this point. So like I go, I think you misunderstood what James said. And she's like, well, he questioned why we were buying stuff. And I was like, it's not how he said it. He said, why Why would you get more chocolate if we already have all the chocolate from the night before? In which my dad goes, which is a valid thing to say. Yeah, it's a reasonable question. Yeah. And, like, James didn't say it in a shitty manner. He, like, asked it as a legit question. And, you know, at the end my dad goes, look, we're going we're gonna to have a discussion when we get back, the three of us. And I'm like, don't do that shit. I'm well, like, her, her, him, Kelly, and Keith are going to have a discussion? No. Myself, Kelly, and him. And I said, don't do that shit. Kelly and I both have anxiety. 
I'm already not, I'm already on the fucking edge. Don't pull that. Mom used to pull that shit. Drive me insane. If you have something to say, say it now. So he's like, all I'm going to say is, he's like, we're all adults. And, you know, Keith's an alpha. You're an alpha. And I'm like, what do you mean by that? Well, you, first of all, you know exactly what he means by that. Yeah. And I'm like... Yeah, you just wanted him to say it out loud. And I said, look, if you're talking about me leading the vacation, it's what you people asked for. You asked me to plan everything. I don't, yeah. have, I don't have to. And I said, and I looked at Kelly and I said, I've said it to you every day. Go do what you need to do. She's like, yeah, but your body language speaks differently. I was like, because my three-year-old's acting like a fucking psycho. How else am I supposed to... What, am I supposed to change body language from the psychopath in the stroller to you and be like, oh, hey, uh, no. Like, I'm going to be like, go do what you need to do. Clearly, you see we're having a fucking problem here. Disney planning is a lot of work. Yo, for real. So much work. And like, and the bigger the group, the harder it is yeah, to like and you, switch uh-huh. gears in the middle of doing something. Yeah, and you all want different fucking things. Like, don't don't put that on me that I'm being an alpha because I'm directing you in the places that you wanted to go. No, you all got lazy and wanted me to fucking do it. All right. So I, I guess I, I, I've been intending on asking you this for a while. Like multiple trips, I've had this kind of general question in my head but so like when you not even looking at like a whole trip but like when you plan a day in a park yes right and let's like use magic kingdom as an example because that's where the most rides are yes. right for kids so like okay right so let's say you're using magic kingdom as an example yes. i know you didn't always used to get fast pass no. but now like when you plan out your day because i know you guys take like breaks in the middle of the day often to yes. go like nap or grab lunch or something so how do you do you do you put emphasis on getting on as many rides as possible while you're in the parks knowing that you have a break in the middle of the day or do you like wake up early stay late intentionally every day like how do you so, or is it just like do you have a certain number of rides in your head going into the park that you're like, all right, these are the things we want to get on and anything else that we don't get on doesn't really matter. It's a combination of two of them. So it is. You got to play a lot by ear. It's no matter what, no matter how well you plan, you can't, you can't plan it to like perfection, right? People are going to be in different moods, weather's weather and like, if you have young children, they're controlling the day. Period. I have Beth here listening to you, too. Yeah. <laughs> like, they, they are the ones controlling the day. So, it, it is, when we have a group, my strategy is, I find out what time the extra magic half hour is, because it should be an hour, but whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And then I say, we have to be at the park an hour before that half hour starts. Because we're, uh-huh. we, I want to be one of the first 100 people in line so we uh-huh. can get in and start right away. Because by the time that half hour ends, is over, if you plan it right like this, it's crazy and you're losing sleep. But like, Mike will tell you, we're like three to four fucking rides in in those 30 minutes. You get a lot accomplished. A lot. And then it's like, once the park opens to the pores, I mean the public, you you just keep going. At this point, you've conquered a good chunk of things that are now going to have long lines, so you can hit some of the smaller shit that you're going to be able to walk on and walk off, right? And then it's yeah. like, it's all about just watching wait times going to the things that have low wait times and knowing later in the day you'll come back and deal with the longer wait times. It's it's about planning an earlier dinner and an early lunch because if you eat at like 5, 5.30, the majority of people are from 6.30 to 8.30. So in uh-huh. that two-hour window, you drop about 50% of the park capacity because uh-huh. everybody's eating. 
So in that two hour window, you're now looking at Peter Pan with a 20 minute fucking wait instead of a 45 plus minute wait. Yeah. That actually makes sense. But, yeah, I mean, the so I us, we usually do like the park map wait time thing because for me, I, I have, I have the, um, what's it like the da- the, the Daz Pass. Mm-hmm. What I used to. It remains to be say, seen if I'm gonna if won't. I'm gonna get it. You won't. The yes. only thing they're giving it out for is like people on the fucking spectrum. Even for anxiety, you can't get it now. Yeah. So like that's what that's how we we are used to planning our day. So like because of that, and like always having two that we can toggle the whole day, we we pretty much always get on everything. But like since we've had kids. In my head, I plan like I th- I think of like one ride per park for myself. So like in Animal Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, and uh, Epcot, I think like all right, what's the one thing that I want to ride in this park for me? And then in Magic Kingdom, I have three, but there are three that like everybody always wants to ride. Everybody always wants to ride Jungle Cruise, Pirates, and Haunted Mansion. I uh, I don't I don't plan for myself. Yeah. Because it's just about like I'm just like let's just get everybody else's shit done. Some of the things I like we're going to end up doing anyway. Though there's right. there's only one thing in Magic Kingdom that like there's two things that I have to do. One is Carousel of Progress because it is my grandfather's favorite thing and it was one of my mom's favorite things. And like even this time when we went on it on carousel i broke from the group and i went down a row by myself i everybody like half the group followed me I, but i went all the way down and and sat at the second to last seat and left the last seat open mm-hmm. for mom um and then people mover like uh, people mover is my jam i there's just something about it i like going through all the rides i like seeing the old model of epcot like mm-hmm. I, but like anything else, whatever we do, we do. I don't care. Should I uh, take this moment to do the random rundown of events? Uh, let me finish up real fast. What do you mean the random rundown of events? So Mike wrote uh, down a bunch of like random shit that happened. Oh, I thought that's what you guys were doing. Well, there's a lot of stuff in there that I couldn't yeah. work in as he was telling. I can, I can finish up with it. So then, real quick, the last day, so we have this conversation with my father. He's like, tomorrow we're going to have a good day, blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, I have no problem with this. I'm, I'm, again, he talked to my kid a certain way. He shouldn't have. That was my reaction. I'm not apologizing for it. I will not accept an apology from Keith because it's insincere. I'm like, we're just, we will, tomorrow we will get through the day. We will drive the fuck home on Saturday, and that'll be the end of it. He's, he's like, fine. He goes, but, like, understand, you know, you and Kelly are on the deed as owners, but it's, like, my DVC. And I was like, Dad, I don't give a shit. I was like, again, plan your own vacations then. It doesn't bother me. I can go with the flow. I don't care. We come down here at least once a year. I don't have to do anything. I'm at the point now where, like, I can walk just around the park for a day, get some food, and still be fucking happy. It's fine. I don't have to do anything. So, Friday, we rope dropped Epcot. Uh, The only things we didn't get done that night was we we didn't get a figment because it didn't come back on. So we did figment, guardians, living with the land. What song did you get? So, uh, Disco Inferno. Yeah. Okay. So it's all right. I, it kind of fits better than uh, Congo. Still my favorite ride ever. Like I, I was giggling the entire fucking time. <laughs> so like fun. the day before we did Smuggler's Run, and it was Zach's first big boy ride. Uh, terrified. Uh-huh. Did not like it. <clears throat> but I noticed that when we got off of Smuggler's <laughs> Run, I was feeling nauseous. So like it had fucked my stomach up. So like Epcot morning comes, we we go to Guardians, and I go, 
we had gotten the virtual queue for me, Mike, Ashley, and, and Keith. So it was the four of us. Uh, we, we go inside. I, I go through the queue, the pre-show and everything. And, like, as we're getting closer to the ride, I'm like, my stomach's still a little queasy. I don't know if this is smart. So I bail. Uh, I bail at the last minute. I'm like, the I'm guy not. you talked to had the most authoritative voice I've ever heard. They should use him for announcements. Yeah, for real. Yeah, so, like, easy. he walks me out, and then he's like, you can sit here on the bench, wait for them to come out. I was like, okay. So, like, they were on and off in maybe five minutes. It's pretty beautiful. Yeah. So they they come, they come walking off, and I, like, jump in right behind them. And I was like, oh, my God, I didn't even see you sitting there. And I was like, yeah. We do the rest of our shit in Epcot, and then we're going to... We leave there to go to the Polynesian because we got an email from DVC that they were filming... Um, Filming families and stuff. Testimonials. Testimonials. So we're like, oh, cool, let's go over to Polly and do that. So me, it's all of us, and then, like, we're talking to the, the people, and they're like, you know, if we're going to do everybody, you can break you up by families and blah, blah, blah. And then, like, it came down to, like, we didn't want to waste too much time, but we wanted to do it because they were going to compensate us with something. They just didn't say what. So we decide that it's going to be myself, my dad, my sister... Because we're the DVC owners. And then we are going to keep James because he's the, the oldest grandchild. Which yeah. Ashley is fine with. And Mike's like, yeah, whatever. And apparently... I got he, to go inside an AC. I was yeah, so fun. they went and hung out in the lobby in, in the poly. So we're on. And uh, they're doing the filming. And like we're talking about some stuff. And they're like, you know, just we want real emotion. And we're like, well, how emotional do you want? And they're like, as emotional as you're willing to get. And my dad's like, you want to talk about it? And I was like, yeah, whatever. I was like, he's like, uh, you do the talking, though. He's like, I'm not going to make it through that. And I was like, that's fine. And you see the, the course, producer's boner start to grow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, something juicy. Yeah, so, like, he, he, I'm like, are you sure? And he's like, yeah. Okay. So it gets to a question. He's like, you know, you, you were talking previously uh, about having like real um, an emotional tie, and I was like, "Well, yeah." Unfortunately, t- about two years ago, we lost my mom, and uh, it, like it, all of them behind the camera were like, "Oh, fuck!" Oh, this kind of emotional. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> so like we we go into detail. Even I got you know choked up. Um. And uh, like they're like it's really good. And they ask a few more questions. You know, I worked some humor in there for stuff. Like, they really enjoyed what we were doing. And they must have liked it because they're like, all right, well, we want to get some B-roll of you guys. Oh. So we, they took B-roll of us, like, walking the boardwalk down to the boats at the poly, us on the beach. And they're like, you know what? We really want to get video of you guys eating Dole Whip. So they're like, oh, okay. Uh-huh. So they run and get us four Dole Whips. And, like... They're taking shots of us eating, and, like, they made James, like, do it six times to get, like, the perfect (laughs) shot. (laughs) But, yeah, the kid had fucking brain freeze. (laughs) So, like, we're like, oh, cool. Like, we're, thank you so much. And they're like, no, 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 thank you. And, like, all the couple other families that were waiting behind us were like, are we getting Dole Whip? And the the people were like, no, 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 that was just, like, for what we needed to film with them. So we're like, oh, that's cool. And then, Shut up, get what we give and then they're like, oh, by the way, it, whatever we end up using of you guys, uh, you'll each get a $100 gift card. Ooh. I was like, uh, oh, sweet. Free go look and a gift card? Yeah. So I was like, Best so day we're, ever. we're walking back towards the lobby to meet up with them. And James is like, you know, this Dole Whip tastes really good. And I was like, yeah, because it's free. <laughs> so then... We had lunch. We broke up after lunch. Kelly and Keith went into Magic Kingdom with us. I don't know where the fuck Mike went. You were with us on the monorail. And I guess you went with Dad? Yeah. Okay. I didn't want to go back. I was fucking so tired. My feet were gone, so I just went back with him. So we go in. uh, We're trying to find shirts. We couldn't find them that Ashley wanted. We got some cool pictures. uh, The shot on Main Street with the fireworks going off from the stage show. We rode teacups. Zach loved teacups. There's no problem. 
And that kind of sucks. I would have liked to have seen him enjoy a ride. Yeah. Every ride, and the thing was, every ride we went on had a dark moment. And as soon as a dark moment happens, he was, it flicked the switch in him, and he just wasn't happy. He was f- fine on the boat ride in Pandora. He was fine on Pirates. Is he okay on Pirates? Because he seemed a little fidgety. He was fine on Pirates. He was fine on Haunted Mansion. Um, Dumbo was great. Dude, we rode Barnstormer. I've never been on Barnstormer before. Oh, Barnstormer's great. It is it is tense for a child's coaster. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's... It is so fast. It's, it's so, like, in and out. It is so That's what I rode that years ago. I'm like, so, so we take Zach on it, and I'm like, it doesn't... I'm like, how, how bad could it be? No, fucking bad. He was, he was like... He was, like, shaking. And I was like, it's okay, it's okay. And then we go on Dumbo. He's fine on Dumbo. But, like... Fuck Barnstormer, man. That, that shit should come with a warning. I, I went on that with you guys. Yeah, that was surprisingly yeah. quick. For yeah. the whole one. I'm, like, uh-huh. I'm not doing Dumbo. I'm not going up and down. Yeah. So we eat at Raglan Road that night. Uh, our waiter there sucked ass. Yeah. Uh, he was slow as fuck. And for some reason, he disappeared. everything he put down on the table had to go directly in front of Zach. Yeah. Like, he didn't know not to... Like, don't put the shit in front of the kid. A handful of silverware right in front of the three-year-old. Other people's food, other people's drinks right in front of Zach. Don't retire yet, Kyle. Just let Mike run through his, his shit of random things. It does say it was 11 o'clock. No, no, it's fine. Go. Okay. I had to wait 10 minutes in a Disney Springs bathroom to take a shit because apparently <laughs> that's where you sit and watch your phone. I mean, I'm just <laughs> staring at each other like, really? Fucking really? Savages in this place. We took a lift ride where there were five separate fault warnings going on in the car. <laughs> you could hear the brakes when we were they were pulling up. I swear it was caliper on rotor. Uh, I almost lost my phone on Slinky Dog. I did, but fortunately, yeah. uh, Ken noticed. And as we're walking away, I was like, oh, yeah, sucks for that person. Holy shit, that person's me. <laughs> <laughs> and then got my phone back and I was switching glasses and within five minutes of almost losing my phone, found out that the nose pad on my glasses broke. Oh. So that was a lot of suck. Uh, my favorite moment, I think, of the entire trip, we were coming out of the Edison, and we had the carriage. And, you know, you need to use the ramps for the carriage. Except this family of, like, seven people seems to think ramps are a place that you just stand around in. And you put your hands on both sides of the opening to block it and just stand there. Now, there are certain times in my life when the fucking switch flips, when the rudeness, when the Liz Lemon in me comes out, and the absolute audacity of humanity is on display. I just, I didn't even think. Like, I saw Ashley go to, like, we do this thing, King Zach, where we're like, we'll lift the carriage, three of us will lift it and bring him up. Like, no, that's not fucking happening right now. I just start walking, and this guy's not facing toward us. I just start walking to him. I was not going to stop walking. (laughs) And just said, excuse me, like not even a, oh, hey, excuse me, no, you fucking savages are breaking a social code right now. Excuse me. The guy turns around. I didn't even look him in the eye. I just kept walking. His family's fucking, they hugged the wall yeah. when I did that. Oh, my God. Then he started to roll his eyes, now mind but you, then saw that there was a carriage there. Mind you, this this comes after the night before was the Ale and Compass thing. Before we get seated at Alan Compass, there's a line of people at, going up to the, oh, the hostess station, shit. right? And, like, I'm like, oh, well, our table got called. I'll stand behind these people. I'm like, are you all, like, going in? And they're like, no, we're just checking in. I was like, okay, that's fine. So, like, the two families in front of us go, and, like, I'm waiting next. And all of a sudden, there's, like, these four early 20s. Early 20s. Young 20s. Yeah. Could and they like teens, no they doubt. come flocking in to my left, and they're staring at this painting on the wall, like trying. They're looking to, at the menu, like yeah, oh, oh, to, like, yeah. well, maybe this thing, uh, and like angling their way in. I know what was about to happen, yeah. and like Kelly was hangry at this point, and she's like, "I swear to God," and I just look at them and I'm like, "Relax." We got in defensive positions. Yeah, so I'm standing there and I'm like, "I'm ready." And, this is not going to happen. Yeah, as soon as the the hostess comes back, the dude on my left tries to move, and I just go right in. I'm like, "We're here, Patterson." Blah 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 blah. 
And Kelly's like, I swear if that person was... I was like, first off, it was me who was standing there. And if you for one second thought that I was going to let that little fuck get in front of me, you seriously underestimate your brother. And it was extra great because the hostess gave the best attitude I've ever seen in a Disney... From a Disney cast member. She didn't give attitude, but, like, the kid tried to be like, oh, can, you know, uh, we, were, we, were waiting, we were waiting to check in. And she was like, yeah, so are four other families. Yeah. So the and they're of, online. Back of the line. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Uh, so Mike goes to steamroll through this family. Yes. Favorite moment of the night. I was hyped for another fucking hour. Yeah, it was great. That. So pissed. Uh, we did the Tiki Room alone. Yes. There was nobody in there. There was no one in there because it was like it was like the first thing we did in the morning. Yeah, because we didn't want to do Jungle Cruise. We didn't. No one was like dying to do it. We do it every time. And then we were riding pirates later that night. So it was just like, oh, and Keith and Kelly ran off to fucking do something. So we're like, fuck it, we'll go on, we'll go on Tiki. Yeah, because we had just done the treehouse. It is just Dad, Mike, myself. Ashley, James, and Zach. We had the entire theater to ourselves. It was <laughs> incredible. We sit in one bench. Oh, we should. We, I, we, I thought we did about spread out. That. We did spread yeah, out. Yeah, we were pretty spread out. Uh, a lot of classless people from the movie theaters around here apparently followed us to the Carousel of Progress because yes. people felt the need to put up, pull out their phones and like go on. Uh, Why well, even go in there then? Thank you. Right. Well, the AC. I guess the AC is the only reason. But, like, don't... Uh, if you're going to do that, sit all the way in the back row so that you're not... Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Don't be trash. Sure. Uh, in the character meet and greet, Mickey and Minnie both love the chef... The, the Iron Chef shirt. They both gave the same mixing bowl yeah. <laughs> motion. I guess that's their, ooh, food line. Uh, our bus driver almost ran over somebody okay. at one point. It was. Wait, it was. Wait, that, the Disney bus driver. It just, was. Yes, yeah. and justifiably right. too. So we're going home from Disney Springs one night, and we're right. We're almost right pulling into Animal Kingdom Lodge, and there's the ramp to Animal Kingdom Park. Dude goes up the ramp, not the bus driver, a dude in a car. Realizes he's going the wrong way, comes down the hill on the grass, right? And okay. you, he he stopped for a second, and our bus driver's like, okay, so he's like slows down a little bit, and like. Sees the guy stop, so he's going to proceed. And then the guy cuts out in front of us. So the bus driver has to fucking hit the brakes. So, like, Mike and I are standing. Oh. Yeah. And it was the mo- one yeah. of the most packed buses we've had. Yeah. And we're, everybody's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And they're like, what happened? And I'm like, I'm explaining. And Mike's explaining. And we're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, we almost died. Uh... It was the most British trip I've ever been on. <laughs> Every two minutes you heard a British accent. Yeah. Everywhere. I, it, it was, it's not an overestimation to say probably 70 to 75% of the people there. It's pretty cool. Cause I like that. that is cool. I'm pretty sure we heard every variation of the British accent. Yeah. From posh to gutter. Yeah. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and lastly, we kind of handled the meal plan a little wrong. Oh. I, I learned that no big breakfasts ever again. Yeah. That day threw the rest of the trip off because we skipped lunch. Oh, God. So we had extra quick serves. You're saying the day that you didn't do a park and you went to Whispering Canyon? Yes. We should have oh. We should have just gotten... Like a quick serve breakfast or eaten the bars of shit that we had in the the hotel room and gotten a quick serve lunch and just maintained because then that threw off the amount of stuff we had. Mm-hmm. Plus, when you have the meal plan, you have to buy for the room. When you have a picky three year old who barely eats anything, there's 20 something snacks between the four of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ken and I alone had nine snacks left yeah. on the last day. We had three Jeez. serves. We had one left over at the end of all when it was said and done. On our, I went yeah. into the store at Jumbo House and bought nine packs of candy. Yeah, and now them down. Zach on our last <laughs> day. There any three? <laughs> yeah, Zach on our last day still had six quick serves. Wow. 
So what we did was kids' peanut butter and jelly meal counts as a quick serve. So we got six Uncrustables with two sides each and six bottles of water for the trip home so that everybody had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich to eat on the way home so we didn't have to fucking stop. <laughs> pretty brilliant so we basically so treat fun. it like when you're playing an rpg and you're like oh i'll save all my health at the end of the bat the, the journey yeah i'll save all my mana we and used it all we yeah. nothing went unused all of it got <laughs> used but it was just like the big breakfast really fucked things up yeah well so i i don't usually ha- i don't usually have this problem because it's just the type of person that i am but i f- I tend to agree with that, that I always want the sit-downs to be dinners. Yes. But yes. My, my reasoning for it is that if they're going to be the most expensive thing that you're paying for, it should be at the meal where you're willing to eat the most. We paid to out get a, the most. We paid out a pocket. Because most people aren't going to want to eat that much for breakfast We paid. Vacation. We paid out of pocket for Whispering Canyon. But okay. it was just still having a big meal like that early in the day. No one was hungry for lunch. It was also, like, every day the heat index was well over 100 degrees. So, like, hot. Never. We did in August. Never again. I, uh, That's why we go in January. We go, I mean, normally, normally we've gone anywhere between October and December. Which is, the weather's great. It's still warm, but not yeah. over barelingly hot. We're going in June, because that's when Dad wants to take James. Also, we have the cruise in August. Um, but that's a fucking cruise. Like, Yeah. I mean, I January is my favorite time of year that I've gone. I've like, the first been. week of January. But I, I have never gone for Halloween. I've never gone to Disney World for Halloween. Halloween's great. We had Halloween tickets, and then COVID happened. Yeah. And then we went to the Christmas COVID. Yeah. All right, guys, I really need to tap yes. out. Night. Okay. Night, Kyle. Okay. Are you, uh, you're, you guys are still going, though, right? We're going to do right. douche and nerd, and then we're out. All right. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Uh, holy wow, did we really went that long? Was it like three hours? Almost three hours. Well, okay. I got no douche. I only got one nerd. I got a nerd. Okay. Uh, Foo Fighters. Did you hear what happened? No, I didn't hear what happened. Trump used my hero at his rally when RFK Jr. (sighs) bent the knee. Please tell me they sued him. Please tell me they sued him. (laughs) So they're like, you didn't get permission. And his camp was like, we totally did. And they're like, no, you didn't. And... Any and all money we make from the royalties of the use of that song now from you is going to the Harris campaign. That's pretty excellent. So, suck a dick. Uh, my nerd this week is the folks at Hot Ones for having Donald Duck on. Yeah. I loved that episode. Fucking hilarious. Loved it. Mickey Mouse in the quarters when Donald said he's my ride home. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Check it out, folks. Yep. This week's episode of Hot Wings. Bravo, Hot, Hot Wings. All right. All right, if uh, you like what you hear, you know what to do. Do that shit. Yeah. I'm not even going to tell you other things. tpublic.com slash nerdy, sinful creations by Justin. Joe, go. Uh, YouTube.com slash nerdy. Subscribe, like, bell, give us money, produce, budget. Hey, Nerdy's crew, <laughs> idiotic, probably thought out. Don't worry, next week's far more insulting. Fuck bye. Fuck bye. Fuck bye. Because of the end of civilization, the Clamp Cable Network now leaves the air. We hope you have enjoyed our programming, but more importantly, we hope you have enjoyed life. Mmm, dry.